know you do it on Facebook. Oh, maybe just on the Facebook. That you see on the Facebook. Because I share the Facebook page with all my friends. So what, I mean, what do you, I mean, let's say you're listening to this, what do you win? <laughs>
That's right. excellent. You have our support. Thank you. you know that. Thank you. Yep. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Those words are even more powerful today with things like Twitter and Facebook and instant yeah. streaming, right? Those are written yeah. long words. Sure. Long yeah. before. Every day at noon. That's right. Paul Harvey. <laughs> For all you young uns, don't remember Paul. Well, you are young. Moving on to the more mundane. <laughs> um, so, a couple things. Uh, one, um, I attended a meeting of the uh, trust fund commissioners, which I'm actually, uh, as a selectman, a, a voting member of, and sort of learned a lot about sort of what, what what the funds we have, how they're invested, um, and some of the things that we spend that money on. The, the, the commissioners are coming to us, um, I think, August 18th? It's either August or September. I'm not sure. It's August yeah. or September, and they're going to sort of present. Um, and I think, um, and it's been a while, I think, since they've been here, they said. so. Years. Many, yeah. Many years. Uh, so um, I think what, what I had asked them to do was kind of basically do what we did in the meeting, which is essentially just sort of lay out, um, you know, what are the funds that they're managing, what, the, you know, what their roles and responsibilities are, Briefly, how the money is, you know, money is invested. I mean, a good chunk of it, um, as Bill Brown was tell you, goes to support the, the cemetery. But there's a lot of stuff, especially dealing with uh, health care that they've been working with Elder Human Service on, which um, presents some opportunities potentially for you know looking at some things. So um, they're going to come in and have that discussion um, with us in August. Um, also, um, I wish Kevin were here. I know I know he's running a little bit late, but Kevin and I. Um, attended a subcommittee of the Human Relations Advisory Committee. There he is. Um, oh, there he right is. Right on cue. Oh. <laughs> I, I was going to steal your thunder, Mr. Sexton. Oh, you can take it. Um, <laughs> um, I was just talking about Kevin and I went uh, to a subcommittee of the Human Relations Advisory Committee um, to really kind of look at ways to um, sort of figure out how they can sort of integrate the work in here and what's the right format. Um, one of the interesting things um, is that they had uh, members of a recently <coughs> formed Wakefield, I don't know what they call it, but it's basically essentially that in Wakefield, and they had formed a commission um, and doing some of the things a little bit differently than maybe what was presented in the initial meeting when um, Human Relations came here and, um, and presented. So the way it was left, I, I think, and, and Kevin, jump in and remind me if I'm, if I'm missing anything. Um, is that you know we're going to meet with the manager and town council and sort of figure out methods and operations that we can kind of get them to fulfill their <coughs> mission in a way that sort of makes sense for us as a town, um, you know, and, and sort of works within our uh, within our cultural you know mechanisms. So um, fruitful meeting. I think we cleared a lot of things and you know positive looking forward. So. Yeah. Is that, is that to me? That's to you. Okay. Well, good. That segue is very nicely. Yeah. So I'll continue on yeah. that. Um, yeah, I think the, the theme of the, the night we discussed this with them <clears throat> from our last meeting with them um, here and and the um, in front of the selectmen. You know, I explained to them that what was what had what was happening that night was basically um, a false expectation more than anything else. And I think they kind of started to understand that our expectation was a, a night of. Um, you know, what did you find? Here's what we found. And I think their expectation that night was one of action um, to be taken on our behalf. So uh, Barry and I kind of talked to them a little bit about that, a little bit about process, how, you know, town handles things and, and how we're able to go about uh, making change in this town. So I, I think um, everybody uh, in the room, I, I could, well, I can certainly say I, I think everyone in the room felt a lot better uh, that Barry and I had come there that night to just explain a little bit more um, about, you know, process, structure, uh, and things of that nature, and that was one of the things I harped on in that meeting a lot was, you know, structure is key, and we really need to see if you're going to formulate something like this, what is the structure of it? Um, not what can it do, not why do we have it. Those are all things that I think everybody uh, can understand and can, and can comprehend, but how is it actually set up um, is the thing that I told them that was really the key, key thing missing from the night that they came and spoke to us. And But, again, to reiterate, I, I explained to them that, I, you know, you were coming to us with, okay, this is what you want to be. It shouldn't have been an action item. Now we have to go back and, and look at it and say, if that's what you want to be, how's the structure of it looking? Is that something that's going to be good uh, for the town and make sense for the town? Can we structure it in a way that's going to uh, be helpful? So uh, I think they're pretty comfortable uh, now with, with the understanding of you know, how we need to kind of operate within, within the town as far as change goes, um, which is good. And, and Barry and I are going to work with them more on this 
um, um, in the future, and we'll, we'll, you know, maybe at a, at a long later date, we explain there's a lot on the agenda. We certainly can maybe come up with something um, to bring back for the board um, that has a little bit more of what we're uh, looking for from a structure standpoint. Um, <clears throat> the other thing, um, I'm not sure if anyone already talked about the last CPDC meeting. No. Uh, okay. Um, so um, the last CPDC meeting, um, Reading Village, which is the proposed 40B project mm -hmm. that's going in across from the train depot, um, they, they came forward and presented um, their, if you, I should say, let me back it up. <clears throat> if you recall from the, the last time they, they come um, getting Brown's Corner, and then looking for more time to go then go back and try to rework that site with, with the Browns Automotive piece added into it. So this was the meeting that they came back and kind of showed preliminary plans of this is what we think the building, this is what we want the building to look like, here's how the site works. Um, I, I think a lot of the positives from um, attaining that corner certainly came out in their project. So um, some of the big things I think that that town was looking for, I know some of the big things uh, that residents were looking for, especially about as if not everything, um, was they brought it down a level. They stepped it a lot further back, at, at significantly in some portions, and, and a decent amount in other portions from this, uh, all the setbacks, uh, which is nice. They made um, the building itself is a really nice presentation where it's got kind of a the corner piece is a little bit more of a commercial setup, and then mm -hmm. it transitions more into what you would feel like almost um, townhome style look. To the building oh. thereafter so, so it kind of steps it down with the roof lines and everything uh, it makes it a little more soft to transition going into the neighborhoods um, so I know that was a, that was a big plus they also reduced the number of uh, units I believe from 77 to 72 is that correct Gene yeah um, so they, they you know essentially it's going to increase I think a few of the parking spaces and decrease some of their um, or if not keep their parking space the same um, and then able to take down some of the units they also changed a lot of the units, um, and I think this would be a positive thing for, for folks uh, in town. They changed a lot of the two bedrooms to one bedroom units, so okay. they reworked the number of bedrooms that they had in the units as well, and that, and that should be um, you know, something I know that, that was of concern specifically, probably with parking more than anything. Mm -hmm. I know some people had concerns with school yep. uh, age kids, uh, but that, that really, um, I think, changed that component a lot. There's still a long way to go uh, in that process, but I, you know, I think the plan that now is they're working on certainly is a lot better than the one that they had presented originally to the CPDC um, without that corner piece. So I thought it was some uh, significant improvements, but again, still a good amount of work to be done and, 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 and peer <coughs> excuse me, peer review to be had on this new building um, before you know, it's in front of the, um, excuse me, not C I keep saying CPDC, CBA. Yeah. CBA. Yeah. Yep. CBA. Thanks for correcting me. Um, so we I get thought I missed the meeting. <laughs> <laughs> so the developer will fund the peer reviewers taking another look at this. That they get another shot at. <coughs> that is correct. Okay, that's good. Yes. In your yeah. packet tonight, there's actually a, a yeah the elevation layout. Is, uh, oh, uh, yeah, it seems a lot better. Kevin, with the change to single well, units, that would seem to actually well, negatively well, impact well, the target well, since yeah. each unit or yeah. it's based on units is, yeah. as well as person primarily. On units, right? The units came down, but more became singles, which brings the unit count back up again. True. Um, no, the, the total number of units are down. They reworked the building, so in absolute terms, the total number. Right. Down. And some of the most of more of them are singles than were previously, or a greater portion. No. Of them okay. Single bedroom. Did I hear that's, you? An that's an interesting point. Yeah, from a square <laughs> footage nice. standpoint, did they actually increase the number what? of units? Of units. Right, and that drives the parking calculation. So that's why. I'm that's curious. an interesting. Yeah, well, they could have made the units bigger saying. though. Sorry? They could have been making the units bigger, though. True. There could be a single bedroom with a lot more real estate. That's true. Yeah. <coughs> Which will command a bigger rent. And that's all I have, unless anyone has any questions specifically on that. Do you that, recall right? what was the amount of affordable in, in this? Proposal? It was still at the 25% threshold, I believe. Was it Gene? 20 25%? 25. 25. 25. 25. <coughs> Do you, know, when, do you know when the, um, is there a, a, a ZBA meeting scheduled or are they waiting to kind of do the peer review to, to then schedule? Uh, yeah. w when's the next meeting? Thursday. Next Thursday. Oh, I okay. think they didn't get these plans until like 24 hours before the ZBA meeting, right? Pretty much. Yeah. yeah.
right. there any, is there, I guess my question then is, is there any reason to schedule a meeting? Is it statutorily that we have to have a meeting within a certain amount of time? Well, why don't we just wait till this stuff's out there, people have the time to digest it, feel good about it, come with the right questions, um, as opposed to trying to read this stuff and listen on the fly. I mean, um, so, I mean, is there, you know, is there any compelling reason to keep that meeting or maybe push it back till it's ready? So what, where are we on the clock, Jean? Right now, I think we've got a 60-day extension, yeah. so I think it takes us to either November or December that it has to be wrapped up. <coughs> sounds like a lot of time, but there's still a lot more to go through. Is that adequate time for the, um, so for the, for the review? They'll grant additional permission. The problem with, yeah. the with the second peer review is we didn't get the check. Yeah, I believe it's just starting now. Right. We just the got review. a check mm -hmm. from the developer. The July. Yeah. Yeah. Pay them. Literally the Thursday before the Fourth of July at mm. five thirty. That's on now. <laughs> <laughs> what time do we close? <laughs> well, that's well, on now. We didn't know that until that Thursday morning. Right. So it's tricky. I think we're all doing the best. <clears throat> Mr. Chairman, uh, yes. while we're talking about forty Bs, Gene, could you give us a brief update on the changes to the uh, one seventy-two Woburn Street plans? Uh, there, there were, I think, some new changes submitted after the board reviewed the plans. Yes. Um, okay. Gene Delios, assistant town manager. Um, you heard a presentation at your last meeting on St. Agnes Church, the school portion being redeveloped for housing, 20 units. Um, almost practically the next day, we got a letter that said there was a change, and the change had to do with the composition of the units, and that instead of being 25% of the units, being affordable to households of under 80% of median income, it shifted to 50 to, to now that being 50% of median income and it being fewer, instead of 25%, it's 20% of the units. So it was 25% of the units, 80% of median income, changed to uh, 20%. Thank you. At 20 and 50%. 50%. 50%. Yeah. So, um, That's a substantial so difference from what they talked to us about, isn't it? I initially thought, you know, I, I don't understand why you would come to a, the chief elected board of a town and then the next day write a letter saying it changed that dramatically. So we back and forth, back and forth. I got a letter from the consultant that's in your packet um, explaining that this was a new finance program that Mass Housing Partnership was offering. And fortunately, I just had a colleague, an appointment with a colleague of mine from Mass Housing Partnership, who does nothing but finance, and she verified it for me. So I'm very comfortable with it now, even though when I got the letter, I wasn't. So, but that, that changes the whole, I mean, so they're, they're lenders are basically running this? Is that kind they of? They get a better rate, so I guess it's a relatively new program. The letter explains sort of all the nuances of, of why this is a better financing program. Um, and it is new. My <coughs> colleague verified it. It's, it's hot off the press. So why would they drop the afford I mean, the whole point of us doing this is for affordability. Why are they, why are they dropping the number of Because affordable it's to units? a lower income group. They're appealing yeah, to it's a, a different plan. Yeah. Yeah. It, 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 the plan's all written for income levels. Right. This it's one mean, pertains to a different echelon of yeah. affordability. 50% of median income is not something you see a lot of. So they uh, probably to get more of that production, they were offering a more attractive financing package. Makes sense. It's only off by one or two, it's 20 units, so right. it's not that big of a difference. Right. Um, and they probably, we, we know there's a need in our housing plan, we looked at it. And there's all Are the plans remaining the same? There's a couple small changes. Um, From what we saw when they were here? The facade and all of that, but I think there was an additional mock-up on that to clarify because there was some question the rendering didn't quite right. match. There's a letter in the your facade. The second paragraph so says they eliminated a walkway and stairs. Yeah, they had said that when they came to talk to you. <coughs> I remember that. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. Somebody said, oh, this, wait a minute, this doesn't 
No, they they clearly when they were here talked about a change from what we were looking at. Yeah. I just wondered if there was anything beyond that. I'm not aware of anything else, but as they say in their letter, it's an iterative process. So hopefully, if there are any more changes, they'll be smaller. Yeah, I, it just I find it interesting because I, I think one of the questions I asked them was specifically why they were here. Yes. Right. And they said, oh, well, because we wanted you to see the finished product, and, you know, we wanted to be sure you didn't have any objection. Well, they also they wanted to be good neighbors. I mean, they were yeah, trying to Yeah, but it wasn't the finished product, is essentially what we heard. Is that right? I mean, I, you know, I'm not trying to throw a damper on the thing. Yeah. It just strikes me as odd. Right. Well, that would change in, 20, in 12 hours. They had to have known that they were looking for something like that. Yeah. They could have at least shared that that was one of their part of their thought process to get our. They were right here. I mean, I, I, I don't like it. Yeah, the, the order of things was a little out of sync. All right. Yeah. I think in the end, it's probably you know not that big of a change. Gene, what's the timetable for this with ZBA? We haven't done any. We haven't seen anything. There's been no filing. Oh, there's no filing yet. There's been no, no letter from. So we have no idea when, I, you know, when they're going to start the work. You know, they've said it's coming. So they usually, typically, you, this board will get the letter. We'll have an opportunity to make some comments. And so they're in the middle of a PNS, and I'm sure the seller is anxious to get that question answered as well. I would expect that. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. It, it could happen fast. It, the letter could come tomorrow. Yep. They just never let us know. It just shows up and that's it. So <laughs> I think they're ready to move. That's what it sounded like. Oh, that, was, that was quite a liaison yeah. report. <laughs> We just kind of just sit. We just I know. We just visit right. up here. It's fine. It's good. Talk. And, um, and Selectman's comments. <laughs> <laughs> Nothing to report. Nothing to report. I, um, I actually was standing next to Paul Harvey's statue of Paul Harvey Park no kidding. next to the river in <laughs> Chicago. So I was not doing any liaison reports either. I've been gone uh, you know, for the last week or so. Um, uh, we're looking for public comment. Mr. Brown. Uh, as many of you may know or may not know, Reading Memorial High School was dedicated on June 9, 1957 to one of the veterans that uh, gave their lives to this country. In the, if you go in the right, in the entryway on the right hand side, you'll see a bunch of plaques, uh, one for Korea and World War II and since Vietnam. In my opinion, there's one that's missing that should be there, and that's for the fellow uh, William Hansen that was killed up in the uh, Persian Gulf among uh, 37 were killed on the USS Dark. And I think that that should be there and I'm looking for some help or guidance from you people. Uh, I did go down to the library and try to find any relatives that might be of the four officers of the class of 83, but apparently they're all gone from this town. So if there's anybody out there that's from the class of 83, we'd probably get hold of them and see if they'd be willing to sponsor a plaque up here in his name. Is and that how the other plaques have been yeah. They've been sponsored by the families? Uh, no, most of them have been sponsored by the town. Matter of fact, the original one was four hundred and some odd dollars back in fifty seven when they did it. Mm -hmm. um, and that was and I don't know who did the Vietnam one, but uh, I think it was his class the classmates of Vietnam students that they were killed in Vietnam. Yep. And I was talking to uh, Kevin, a veteran service officer, and he thought it would be great if we could get something done by Down at, uh, that would be awesome. Where he's buried, because his parents do tend to come up every Memorial Day. Yeah. It's only you know it's been 29, uh, 29 years. In fact, I was on the live looking on the internet, and they're just celebrating. Well, I shouldn't say celebrating, but they just had their uh, 29th reunion of those that were killed. So I think he deserves to be up here. Question? Yes. Bill, do you know if in fact that's the only 
Reading Casualty if you go to Desert Storm, Desert Storm. Uh, as far as I know, yeah. I'm sure Frank, you'll let me know if I'm wrong. So. To the extent that we might overlook one, it might be worth No, I, I don't think so, John. The some have died as a result afterwards, but not in action. Is the only one since Vietnam, but thankfully that has some children in action. I think that's a really good point, Bill. I think we need to probably uh, start processing that. I mean, the, the original one was paid for by the town. Yeah. I said around three hundred so much dollars, but that was in '57. So, so it probably only cost about ten grand. Now. <laughs> well, good point. Good point. Back to you. I looked up some rough prices. It went up as far as seven hundred fifty dollars. And I don't mean to be flippant. Uh, but I, I really do think this is a noble project, and I think it's something mm -hmm. that I, I, I'm sure that any one of us, or collectively, we'd be happy to, sure. you yeah. know, to work with you and uh, yeah. Kevin. Uh, you know, primarily, I'd like to have you work with Kevin because he he is a veteran service officer. Yeah. So yeah. Okay. All the emails and all the other stuff. That I we will. That's a point well taken. Thanks for bringing this to our Thanks, attention, Bill. Bill. Thank, Thank you, Bill. Bill. <coughs> well, there's, a, there's one other two, John, if I might. Yes. I noticed that. Uh, Contracted for the M MWRI water line is using uh, Leach Park as a staging area. I assume he's going to uh, rebuild it afterwards. I don't know if we could persuade him into putting a flagpole up there. Because we don't have one. Hmm. That's one of the few parks. And that is named after the uh, first gentleman who was killed in World War I, Frank Lee. Okay. I think Fred will do that for us. <laughs> I would think he would have asked. Yeah. Yeah. A little bit of coercion. Yeah, yeah well, we have to actually have we a upcoming meeting. meeting with Fred. And we're doing yeah. lots of business with them, so we'll bring that up. Um, yeah. And I, I think that, that, you know, knowing the executive director of the MWRA, I, I would guess that that'd be something yeah, he's be a stand -up interested guy. in doing. Uh, probably like to tie a dedication to that, maybe with the mm -hmm. uh, Boy Scout and Girl Scout troops here in town kind of tie it all together. I think that's something he'd be very yeah, You're, you're hitting for the cyclone now. <laughs> I am. Yeah. Yeah. Roll with you. That's Dr. good. He's, a, he's an Eagle Scout, right? Yeah. Not, not just an Eagle Scout. <laughs> Don't worry. We'll get a pound of flesh out of Fred. <laughs> oh, he's got he's in the MWR every week we can. Um, Any other public comment this evening? Um, hearing none. Bob, how about... Um, just a couple things, um, Mr. Chair. On page five of tonight's handout for the board's review is the annual uh, legal budget. We still have a couple of invoices. I'm expecting a small one from Labor Council and <coughs> probably at least one small one from TLT litigation. But by and large, we're wrapped up. And I thought you'd just uh, like to see a summary of how we spent our money. 150000 odd on town council about the same on, on TLT litigation for the past year. Uh, the chair and I are going to have lunch tomorrow with uh, town council at his request. Um, he wants to know how their services can improve. It's going to be difficult to figure out. <laughs> yeah. he's, he's given us really good service, I have mm. to say. And look at the, how close to the budget, too. What a, like, it's like a miracle. <laughs> it's good budgeting. It is good budgeting, <laughs> that's for sure. Um, to play off of that, Bob, for just a second, yeah. if I might, I didn't mean to interrupt <coughs> you too much, but um, if any of um, the rest of our board has specific input that they'd like to share with either Bob or myself for that meeting tomorrow, please don't mm -hmm. hesitate to send us a note. Okay. Um, either one of us or both of us, or we can talk afterwards. Um, Bob, what else do you have? Um, I, I would ask you to review at your leisure the pages after five. There's just some miscellaneous things. Um, and otherwise, I'm ready to launch into the next topic, which has also been reproduced in your handout tonight on page two. Okay. I think you do have a warrant to close first, though. Yep. Yep. So I think we should go about the business of closing the warrant, and then let them, we can move directly to the working groups. Um, so. mo move to the water. Oh. Yeah, I think yeah. you're wrong. Yep. I think you're on. Right? Move the board of select and close the warrant for the September 8, 2016 state primary. Second. Um, discussion. And this is for the uh, the primary uh, for everything but presidential offices at the, the state rep and above level. Okay, in September. In September. Yeah, there's no state elections. It's just reps and senators, right? No, it's no, no constitutional officers. No. No, but uh, state reps and state senators are on as well as the 
U.S. Uh, congressman. No senator this time. Oh, the congressman's up too? Oh, oh yeah. That's good. Every yeah, two years. Yeah. Every two years. Every two. Well, seems like yesterday. Yeah. Yeah. Any other discussion? Hmm. Uh, all those in favor? 5 0. Okay. We got quite a crowd here, Bob. You better get rolling. Yeah, they're expecting itchy. food. <laughs> I thought it'd be helpful for all the department heads as were available to come tonight to have a discussion. And I would classify this discussion as more of, from now on, a working uh, group, a working session. So in other words, it's open mic for anyone. <laughs> um, I have listed five sets of goals, five working groups, and then five goals in each, just more or less by coincidence. Um, I think the board tonight should spend as much time as it needs to on all individual goals because you have a good room full of audience here to talk about. Um, let me review just at a broad level. You can see it, what the groups look like, and then we'll get into the goals. There's one selectman that's just honestly by coincidence, I came up with five groups and it just worked out, and then I remembered there's five selectmen. So that worked out well. So. Uh, John Halsey and I talked briefly and these assignments seem to make sense. Um, and then for each of the groups, financial sustainability is one. Um, there's a member of the selectmen, there's myself, there's the town accountant, uh, Jane Miller's in the room, Nancy Heffernan, our assistant treasurer, and, and Victor Santaniello, who's our halftime uh, shared ass assessor with Wakefield, will participate as he's able. Um, we'll get into what those goals are, but clearly financial sustainability is a really big topic on everyone's plate right now. And uh, we have to prepare for if an override is called and if it succeeds and if it fails, we have to have plans A and B at a minimum. <coughs> Something that grew out of a couple of years ago discussion, um, it had been done informally, but it started to be discussed a little more formally as operational efficiency. And again, I'll get into that shortly. Um, Sharon as town accountant is the chair. I've marked myself as a participant in all these groups. I certainly don't expect to really be a full participant in all of them. Um, the assistant town manager, uh, Allison Jenkins, is our new procurement officer, and by the way, a fellow selectman from Hamilton. Oh. Uh, our technology uh, director, Kevin Farilla, and our newest employee, Kevin Kabuzi, is uh, Joe's assistant in facilities. Uh, we re retrieved Kevin after a two-year hiatus from working as Joe's number two previously. So we reached in the past and grabbed. Uh, communication was also a goal last year in a working group. Uh, Matt is the chair of that group. <coughs> Matt has, uh, in addition, um, Amy Lannon, the uh, interim director of the library. Uh, DPW is Jeff Sager. Again, Jane Miller, Kevin Ferrillo from technology. Uh, Lieutenant, well, not so much anymore. Assist <laughs> Assistant Chief Paul Jackson now from mm -hmm. the fire department. Uh, we have an open position for police deputy that I would expect to join this group and uh, John Feudal, our community uh, services director. Communication is a, is a big topic that you can never really fully solve. It's a big group and it's the biggest group there is for a reason. I'm sure it'll be divided up into pieces and parts. Um, you know, organizational communication, no matter if we did a perfect 12 months of work, 12 months from now we'd find we need more work. So it's never something you're going to solve, but it's something you need to have a process that recognizes there's always improvements that can be made. So is that to make me feel like the same financial sustainability we can solve? We can definitely solve that no problem. problem. We will definitely <laughs> solve that problem. <laughs> We're going to spend much time in, Bob. That's all. <laughs> definitely solving that problem. I'm not sleeping until we do. Um, for communication, one of the tasks, and you know, we have a large organization, <coughs> communication is one of the remaining things that's pretty decentralized and there'll be some discussion whether that's good or bad uh, certainly from a board standpoint and we're going to get into this later tonight next week you have chairs invited from all your boards appointed boards in some cases full boards may attend and communication is one of the topics to be discussed with them so um, policy is kind of a catch-all it's um it's some selectmen's policies it's some internal policies um that's a longer term focus with, I don't think there's any particular crises. Uh, Chief Burns is the most logical department head we have, so he seemed to make sense to be in charge of that. 
<laughs> He's sitting in the back <laughs> by the door. <laughs> yeah. The fire department has as many policies as they need. They don't waste any, and they, they follow all of them. So I thought it was a perfect choice. Uh, Matt Cronellis, with a lawyer as a background, I think is also helpful. Um, chief Sagala made sense also. The two police chief and fire chief made the most sense. Again, Allison Jenkins from a procurement standpoint, because there will be some issues. Jane Kinsella is our assistant uh, DPW director, and Judy Perkins, our HR, for any kind of internal policy discussion. <laughs> and then lastly, long-term planning. And this is a little bit more slanted towards economic development, although there are other pieces to it, just so you know. So the last two are really more long-term policy and, and long-term planning. Um, Jean is the chair, as would make sense. Um, she'll be joined by Joe Huggins, because some of planning will involve uh, town buildings and facilities. Jane Kinsella also because with her procurement background, you know, she'll be expert. The assistant library director, which is technically an open position, and then Julie, our assistant, our uh, com community development director. So that's sort of an overview <coughs> from your standpoint. And just to go over the selectmen, um, the chair for financial sustainability, because if I won't figure it out, he will. Operational efficiency, Dan, that's a good background, Dan, has communication, Kevin, that's what you do. Um, John Arena for policy and, and Barry Berman for long-term planning. Again, economic development seemed to all fit pretty well, uh, mm -hmm. broadly. And obviously, you guys can overlap and, and collaborate as as you wish. Mm -hmm. um, I don't think anybody should feel like they're enjoying yeah. from not right. not joining any one of one of you up here. If you would like to join into another committee yeah. meeting, because sure. you probably need another meeting in your life anyway. Right. Absolutely. So, uh, so, yeah, so, I mean, is this envision kind of like the subgroups kind of working together on its own sort of schedule? It'll be up periodically to the chairs meeting, to decide that. Kind of coming back as a group to sort of share things. Some of these will have some, some quicker, of these, quicker action points yeah, than some others. Some of these, as you get into the goals, you'll realize there's very discrete parts. It's not all one thing. Um, and, and then you'll see a more natural fit, for instance, where a selectman would fit. I do not envision there being monthly or quarterly meetings for all of these groups with full attendance. That doesn't really make any sense. But it's going to be to pick off specific objectives. And, you know, the chair and the selectmen involved will sort of decide what the role of the select person is because obviously we can meet more easily during the day than most of you can. Great. Will these um, be subject to public meeting? Um, no. no. No, they're not. They're working groups. They're staff, staff level meetings. And, and at some point, <coughs> would it make sense to sort of communicate the successes and the, you know, kind of direction to the, you know, maybe in, I don't know, three months, six months, yeah, I, back I as a whole? I, I mean, just because an update the, three times a year. I, I can change that and do it uh, more often as is warranted. Some, some topics may certainly deserve that. Um, you know, you tell me, basically, you want to do it quarterly. We found that quarterly wasn't really necessary and twice a year really. Honestly, you tell me what you want. Yeah. Um, let's launch into that first group that we're going to solve: financial sustainability. Uh, the first goal. If you solve number one, then the rest of them are yeah. all. Yeah. 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 Maybe we should leave that I'll to let the you guys end. go first. Yeah. No pressure, though. Yeah. <laughs> no. There's always an exit strategy. Yeah. Um, the first one is: is I've looked at two dates, 2025 and 2030, somewhat arbitrarily. We'll get into a discussion later tonight in the second agenda item uh, on finances. But 2025 is a good target um, for a lot of reasons, one of them being the last time that this town did an override, it was described as it is gonna, it's going to last for eight years. It may last as long as 10 years. This would be eight years. Um, as we know, it lasted for 13 years so far. 2025 is off also when the last of our library debt, excluded debt, comes off the tax rolls. The high school comes off the year before. Um, so again, you'll get to this, but taxpayers are paying about $3 million now for the high school and the library outside the tax levy. Uh, that'll decline slightly every year until 2024 when it's about $2.6 million. And then it drops to half that for 2025 because there's only the library piece in there. So in the period of 20. 23, 24, it seems like a natural planning time for some group of people to sit down and say, well, 
you know, the, the excluded debt doesn't dictate when we need money, but it's another opportunity to, again to go to the community and say, you've just been relieved of X, now we need Y. So that seemed like a, a reasonable plan. And then 2030 is 13 years, which is where we are now since the last override. So they, those seem to be the endpoints to me to look at an override, and we're going to have more of a discussion on this again in the second part tonight. Um, local real estate tax policy. The Board of Assessors will be here in, in two weeks. Um, I'm having a meeting with uh, staff tomorrow about it. It's really to discuss some of the things you've heard uh, that pertain to senior tax relief. So again, we discussed three tools that probably will go to a town meeting <coughs> regardless, and a fourth tool that's somewhat controversial within the state and the DOR, but it seems like a good uh, local option. Um, we've heard in the last few days, and our assessor will know far more, that the state has actually taken a shot at making this a state law, but not in time for what we want. So we want to, whatever we do, we want to make sure we leave it open to go to the state model, you know, should one develop. Um, but I remember last summer talking to one of our representatives and saying, you know, surely every community you represent needs the same thing. Why don't you just do it at the state level? And, and happily, they are taking a crack at it at the state level. With but the idea, the objective to be to keep seniors in their homes. So yeah. our reps will, are, are kind of locked and loaded and ready for us in that regard. I um, yes, yes, I, I don't know the best timing, though. Um, the last two of them that I saw, uh, said by all means get us stuff as fast as you can so we're going to talk about that tomorrow what that means um, i do not at this point have any um, preconceived notion that a september town meeting will vote on language i don't think that's possible what i want to ask town council tomorrow at lunch is what his uh, legal advice is on process do we want to use him and have him him go to the house the senate and the dor as our middleman and work it out with their councils because this will be a pretty intense negotiation. DOR is not, does not want this. They have approved it in the past, but not happily, just to be real clear about that. We are effectively taking tax, tax policy out from underneath them at the local level, and that's not something they look at lightly. Um, so our legislators have said, you will get our support, but just understand, you know, this is, this is a and bit of a battle. DOR has the final say. The governor appoints most of DOR. <laughs> Okay. I don't know, Matt's the expert at that. To so it's tough. It's real tough to know. Uh, you know, and I don't mean to set it up adversarially, but we have to be realistic. We have to understand. <clears throat> uh, we have to talk about projects outside the tax levy. So come to mind our Killam School and um, a DPW garage, wherever it may be. Um, and again, you know, we'll see where that goes. And is there any other project we can imagine? Uh, you'll see in a later goal that's to be determined <clears throat> we, we've already taken a good crack at goal four so I kind of cheated um, in terms of gathering feedback from the community you know it's something that we started maybe seven or eight years ago to try to elicit and I guess if, if I were to look back over the seven or eight years the, the one comment I would make is that it's really hard to gauge the amount of education you need to give out because every time the room fills up, it's a different room full of people. Um, sometimes you know, presentation A would not be necessary at all and just be a waste of everyone's time. Other times, you know, where's presentation A? I don't understand. Don't you find it interesting, though, that there's a common thread that seems to run through all of these listening sessions? <clears throat> you know, on oh, yeah. Certain topics that, yeah. you know, seem to bring everybody out of their seat. And I'm guessing that these are things that, based on how things un unfold over the course of the balance of this year, um, we go back and get more feedback. Yeah, absolutely. And the last goal is to provide information to the community, and, that, and that'll overlap a little with the communications goal. Um, clearly, um, our you know, in terms of financial sustainability. You know, and the key date on that is September 1st. Um, September 1st is at the high school. It's a community financial forum. 
being led by the board of select the upper as we season. Um, usually family these meetings this time it's your it's sort of sort of a moot point, but it's an important distinction. Um, I would describe it as a dry run for a town meeting. It's called the town meeting, but assume it's a dry run. Yeah, not on our uh, not list. Yet. I was most You actually need to add some it's a lot. I'll tell you right First of all, Pincom has a policy for a reason, which is you know, a project above X, whatever it is, is excluded as a recurring cost. You have to be real clear about that. You don't want to come down uh, in a couple of years and say, well, What are you asking me for? And that was the whole thing when the library came up. I mean, yeah. we did that at a town meeting. Uh, we laid out that here are the things that are coming down the path. We laid out four or five projects to, you know, creating override, which was back, but its headlights were starting to kind of get yeah. shine. And every year we laid it out. This is what's coming. I mean, you can say it a million times. And um, it, it, but then when people, it, a lot of folks just realize it when it's happening, and, and so yeah. you know, um, I think we actually did a pretty good job of sort of laying out, you know, even a few years ago what the what the next five to seven years potentially could look like, which are now we're in that window. I think we did a great job of laying it out and being transparent, and being open. But again, it's 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 who's. You know, Heard a lot of people who's feeling surprised. Who's listening? Right. It's just like, oh, I didn't know that. And yeah. well, you, we did a great job in the context of the usual suspects, town meeting, yeah. Yeah. right inside. Right. And that's one of the key parts of communication. Right. How do you talk to other people? There are sixteen thousand plus yeah. voters. Right. I mean, Seventeen now. Right. I mean, there's just the communication to each other and then talking to the community. And one one takeaway might be that whatever conversation we have on the override has to include of talking about goal number three so that at no time do you just talk about one to the exclusion of the other. I'm not saying you give it equal time, but... But it's a clarification issue, John. I it's think you're right. Yeah. Yeah. Otherwise, yeah. you get into the case, you didn't tell me this. Well, we did. No, but it was a different group of people. It was a different date. You really need to be coupled. Yeah. Which almost begs the question, I guess that's tied to the communication, is how do you really get it in front of as many people as possible? Um, well, that's Matt's problem. Fix that up. Social media has been helpful. We've started that. Um, Facebook and Twitter, you know, it's been pretty popular to get the message out. So yeah, you could direct them to a, a, a site where they could read more about yes, it. Yes, uh, exactly. Yeah. So that's a new one. That, that's been very helpful. We still have a fair amount of people that are, you know, you know reading yeah. this thing. Yeah. Yeah. You know, I mean, yeah. There's, yeah. I mean, there's something in there it's the last two days. The yeah, they, uh, we have to find ways to get get this information to as many people as is humanly possible, um, and I, I don't think we're doing that yet. I think we're, it's a work in progress for sure. But uh, we really need to think about accelerating that. As we is the is there any thought of an informational level mailing, a bulk mailing to uh, town residents uh, on? Financial information pertaining, kind of what they do for the ballot questions and haven't, done, haven't thought of that yet. Hmm. We don't have enough money to do that. <laughs> what would it cost? Throw it in with the census. Townwide mailing is fairly over. I have a guy yeah. four or five grand. Yeah, we can throw it in with the census. Right? Cents now, Paula. 
50 something cents. If we do a town wide blast mailing. Yeah, yeah so 9,000 residents ballpark. My guess, though, is it would be you could do that with a, yeah. some kind of a bulk uh, mailing that would be less expensive. Yeah, what did the zoning yeah. cost us? That was a fortune. Oh, yeah. <laughs> well, that had to go to specific voters. That. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> uh, one thing, uh, if I could, that uh, Rex puts out a, uh, a full program every so many months, and that goes to every household. Hmm. I'll use the filler space, right? Yeah. Why not? You're the department yeah. that is appropriate. Yeah, well, I mean, <laughs> I can't think of a good reason not to have that. Pay a postage, throw up the spare water bills. Right, and the water bills we, we get, get the we get the DPW <laughs> newsletter. Yeah. Use yeah. Up R RMLD bills that they would do. Use it. up that half ounce, whatever it is. Yeah. That would actually be a pretty interesting place too. If that would, I say, we could do. Would. I I just want to remind everybody, this is a workshop format. Yeah. So don't hesitate to speak up. I mean, I, we kind of encourage. As you probably have noticed from the five of us, we we like talking about stuff. <laughs> so, uh, can you do it? We can't take a position. Right, you're absolutely correct. right so about that. You're right. But mm -hmm. factual information is yeah, really absolutely. important. Just I mean, so for example, <laughs> on this topic of number, th whatever that number three was, yeah, I, think, I mean, so that people are clear in their understanding that there are, <clears throat> you know, there's debt exclusions and there's overrides and really the, right. the twain do not meet. Um, and, and I think that's a piece of factual information that is lost on yeah. The average person, and I understand why it's right. lost on. Right. But you know, uh, but they're not they're not focusing on it now. It's the summertime. You know. Why? Well, who wants to focus on that no. anyway? No. I mean, think about it. And, but when they're faced with it, is when the time is that they'll right. that they'll focus on it. And so, I think we have to be timely in the way that we communicate. Right. And you're right, I mean, factually as well, and not from a position standpoint. I do think that's really important, and and I think town council was pretty clear. Yeah, I mean, all yeah. of us in this room have exactly. to be very careful about, you know, when we act um, in, in our in our public roles, um, how we disseminate information. Back to the topic of now what we communicate, but how we do it. I think all of the ideas, whether it's the tax bill, the rec, the rec mailer, the article email, there is a way to get in the newspaper and social media is a way to get a consistent storyline that gets all of those. And it gets updated and refreshed, but it's at least a consistent mm -hmm. storyline. Uh, you got you to hit them all. Yeah. Yep. Yep. And multiple times. Yeah, yeah one, one of the points I'd make is technically right now there's nothing. You haven't called for a town meeting. You haven't called for an right. override right. election. Correct. So until you do that, I would suggest you plan for it, but you can't do anything. Right. It doesn't make sense. There's no action. It's not official yet. Um, but, you know, you're right. We're six weeks from when, or four weeks from when you may call for a special town meeting. That's not a lot of time. And then, you know, October's not too far away if it turns out to be an election. Um, but we've talked about that internally, and the answer for now is, you know, and we'll get into this a little, put stuff on the website, answer people's questions, and so forth. But in terms of reaching out and grabbing anyone, there's nothing to say right now. Right. Right. Other than making points well, clear. There really isn't anything until after the 16th of August. Right. And then based on the outcome of that meeting, you know, yeah. it marches you, from there. You call for a special town meeting, that's the go sign for any any and all the follow-up. But you could start immediately on the fact-based material. It didn't get sent, but you yeah. could start prepping it now. Yeah. And we are. Push that in. The fact-based yeah. material is valuable yeah. no matter what. Yeah. Um, and the delivery system is always pertinent yeah. to it to this discussion Something because good. there's there's always a need for the delivery system right. no matter what the topic is. Yeah. Um, anyone else have anything on uh, the first set? Is the September first meeting set or that yes. would stem from I mean, what is the one you would most want public appearance at, the September 1st? September 1st. Yeah. So isn't that something that you could 
Yeah, I mean, technically yeah, until August 16th, September 1st is somewhat of a moot September point. September 1st is kind of a placeholder as of right now. Yes. Okay. Okay. But you're right. September 1st is meant, you know, we For took the largest access. place in town, this, this auditorium of the high school. We'll invite town meeting members. We hope many of them come, but there's room for a lot more. So, yeah, that's that's clearly the goal. And it really is, from an informational standpoint, <clears throat> the dress rehearsal for for a special town meeting should that be called for. Uh, that's the way I think we need to look at it. And, um, so, yeah, the biggest crowd possible, I think, is what we want. Yeah, that just triggered a thought in my head. We ought to ask our, ML, our, our CTV. To figure out what's needed to capture that, to be able to do the screen and the speaker and maybe any questions, as opposed to the, the typical case where the audio may not be so good, to capture that so we can throw it up on YouTube. Whether that's one hour or two hour video, that's that's free. We capture it right. That's mm. that's free promotion that we can throw up on our YouTube channel or on our, our Facebook page. Well, we can reference people to it. If it's well done. If it's yeah. hard to hear and it's not quite clear and you're talking and but it's not visible on the screen. But isn't it, that'll be I think that there's probably a great possibility for that getting done right because you're not you're not having audience speakers. That's a delivery. It's not really a Q and A as I I don't think that's well, at least the way I understand it. First that. three meetings, you know, we had what I thought would be 15, but it really turned into 30 minutes of presentation and then a couple of hours of Q&A, and this will clearly be the opposite. Um, there'll be a two-hour presentation, I'm thinking at least. The schools will be a big participant. Um, and then whether or not we leave time for Q&A is, is to be discussed. Uh, I think it's important to do it, but I'm not sure if you're come up, coming up with a solution are you also asking a question? Do you like the solution? That's up for two all hours so of presentation. I'm, I'm guessing that. How are they going to hang with that? Uh, we'll have to keep keep oxygen in the room. Yeah. <laughs> Sounds very long to me. Lock the doors. It is, but mm -hmm. if you rotate speakers and rotate topics, it can go by pretty quick. And if it's written at the right level, yeah, it keeps moving. If it's well, that's key. Yeah. Forget. Let's move to the next group, operational efficiency under uh, Sharon, our town accountant. Mm -hmm. it, that's an ongoing goal, number six, to uh, continue to look at regionalization, but this is a little broader. Um, this is also resource sharing with other organizations, and that's meant to be very nebulous. It could you mean be internal uh, organizations? Or it could uh, be public-private. It could be uh, nonprofit. You know, inside Reading, not inside Reading, more likely to be corporate inside Reading. Corporate partners, it's wide open. It's something we know we should do, but in some ways we're not really sure where to start. We've taken a few cracks at starting that haven't always worked out well. Sharon will figure that out. Um, a very clear goal is master planning uh, for human elder services. Uh, and again, I don't presuppose what that'll look like, so I don't know. But that's obviously demographically one of the most important groups we have of residents to mm -hmm. look at. Do we have such a such a master plan now? <coughs> Do we have any? We have the first <coughs> phase of it. We did a survey last year. So um, we have some data that we've collected. Is there an old one, like 10 years old? Yes, there is an older one. Okay. Yeah, it's, uh, I think it's about 12 years old. Okay. It's the end of Right. <laughs> did did we? I was here. <laughs> Did we in any way look at public-private partnerships, how to leverage those and the furnishing of uh, elder services? We spent a lot of time on that about yeah. five or six years ago. Yeah. Reached out to all the neighboring communities, peer communities, just did a ton of work on trying to come up with a model that would, uh, that would be somewhat thinking outside of the box. And every, every place we turned, we just hit brick walls. Hmm. Nobody's figured it out. Yeah. That's the problem. Yeah, every, and everybody gets so nervous when you start talking about that. And mm -hmm. People didn't want to return our phone calls. And it's it's kind of close painful. to home. Yeah, it's like a painful process. We just wanted to talk, you know? Yeah. Painful. <coughs> Goal 8 is uh, probably going to exist to the end of time in the yeah. government world. You know, it's it's maybe about time we joined the 1980s and had internal data we could actually measure and calculate and conclude something with. 
Yeah. We haven't got around to doing that what yet. What are some metrics you're talking about here? Uh, how long does it take to fill a pothole once it's reported? Oh. You know, stuff like that. <laughs> yeah, I, I know that's the answer. <laughs> <laughs> what a great government answer that is. <laughs> Sign that man answer. up. <laughs> it's the government answer. But I'm well, I, I give you one anecdotal story, and I don't know if DPW knew this was me because it was it came in under my wife. Um, at 5.30 at night, disguised as my wife, I reported with their <laughs> software a tree limb hanging over across mm -hmm. the street, not even my property, and I gave that address. Mm -hmm. They were out there by 8.30 the next morning, and it was fixed. So, you know, I'm willing to send my name in as anyone in town if they need help. <laughs> <laughs> that definitely got the answer. You're going to be like Waldo. You're going to be everywhere. Everywhere. Or Gumby. What's the new know. thing that they're doing? Pokemon. 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 Pokemon Go. Oh, yeah, Pokemon Go. Your avatar out there. <laughs> Bob will become the avatar. Yeah, right. <laughs> I don't know what Pokemon is. I'm afraid. I'm afraid to ask. Um, I, one of the things I found in the community listening meetings was that the peer data interested a lot of people. It's one thing to discuss something theoretically about Reading, but when they start seeing what other communities do or don't do, um, a lot of people's interest was peaked. And you know, generally, it seemed like people wanted to do better than their peers. It's sort of a competitive thing. But the first step was, what do others do? And I have to tell you, we all have peers in other towns, and we generally are aware of what goes on. But I'm not sure that plays much of a role when we decide how we should be. Right. But we're aware of it, so maybe subconsciously it does. Okay. Um, but it was a very powerful communication tool when we started showing this is how peers collect revenue. This is how peers spend money. Uh, mm -hmm. This is what the average tax bill looks like by income. And all that kind of stuff seemed to a lot of people came up to me after those three meetings and for weeks after and said, you know, that approach really taught us a lot. That's we good. understand how we fit into a bigger picture as opposed to just complaining that something's too high or too low. We understood. Right. You know, maybe we still think it's too high, but against our peers. You know, well, it's almost low. like a visual interpretation yeah. because you, you know, you drive through another town and you yeah. observe things and then when you see how that matches to <laughs> what we do here, Things and that's so how most people up. I mean, most people in, in private business, right. you're always looking to see how the how, what are your competitors doing that you're not. What are you doing? Wh where's your edge? I mean, so we're, everybody, whether you know, in their working world, working life, is used to looking at that kind of that data to do their own job. So um, I'm not surprised mm -hmm. that people found it fascinating. And there's even some unsung things that we do. Uh, two things that come to mind: DPW does not all towns do. We maintain water and sewer right up to the. The, the foundation. The, the water, yeah, absolutely. Right. The water, okay. Yep. Uh, so people don't have to maintain their pipes. And we plow downtown for businesses. We remove snow. Yep. So, and those are those are things we've come to expect and right. maybe not, not document too well and t tell people we do. So to the extent we <laughs> eventually do a good job on goal eight, that feeds into goal nine, but mm -hmm. now our peers need to do the same good job on eight. Yeah. And that's been a real vexing topic. Um, some real uh, data wonks in Massachusetts have attacked this and just run away screaming after two or three years. They just can't bat believe how one community and the next report their data so differently. Yeah. Yeah. That you're doing the same thing. Why does it look so different? Oh, it's not really. We just report our data differently. I mean, if you, if the, if you can go back... 400 years and have the pilgrims land again, you would not <laughs> construct state government. No. Where you would make it, you know, we'd have maybe I 20 think cities in Stop towns. right there. <laughs> you would not conduct, construct state government. Right. Yeah, you have counties. <laughs> and the federal government. <laughs> well, they they had the government. federal government right in the beginning. It's incredibly <laughs> inefficient. <laughs> it's it's grown like uh, topsy. Goal 10 is kind of behind everything you do. It's uh, to improve your efficiency with technology. Um, I had an interesting lunch uh, last week with a couple of retired uh, employees that are still working for us part time. Um, and one of them was our retired town accountant, Gail Point, who some of you will remember. <coughs> and, and she had an unusual background where um, she was very much a technology systems mind and person, happened to be working in an accounting role. Um, you know, I'd talked to her a lot over the last year about trying to conquer 
the sales approach of all of our software vendors to actually make the systems do things together the way they were described, which they don't. Yeah. Um, and this is a real problem in the corporate world as well as the municipal space that you know, the we all know the salesmen's mouths are way ahead of the, op the engineer's <laughs> abilities. Um, and that's fine. We don't usually run into that as much because we're not usually buying very much you know, as a municipality. Um, but it was really surprising that all the vendors would all agree we work well with each other. And some of the towns that we talked to agreed with that on a limited basis. But we were trying to do things that no town had done, and now we better understand why. It's because mm -hmm. technically it's not possible. So we have really good technology, um, really good staff, and um, some pretty difficult experiences with the products and the vendors. Um, we've had in this room, for instance, with one of our softwares, we, we formed a users group. They didn't have one before. Mm -hmm. Our GIS administrator formed it, um, got seven or eight towns in here, got the vendor in here, locked the door, mm -hmm. and the vendor was taken to the woodshed. Mm -hmm. I give them a lot of credit. They stood right there and they took it. Mm -hmm. They had been promised in eight different communities, oh, everyone else does it. I don't know why yours isn't working. It wasn't working anymore. Oh. So wow. we, we had a little, a little session, mm -hmm. and the vendor has been excellent since then. You know, all of a sudden, the emperor had no clothes, and uh, let's that's let's great. all work together to get this product where we need it to be. Um, you know, that's a tough, that's a tough topic. You know, we can't fix the vendors. Also, I mean, that's really what I, it comes down to. I think a lot of this accountability factor to that too. Yeah. I mean, I think that particularly in the municipal sector, <laughs> providers tend to think that <coughs> they don't have to be as accountable. Well, once they get in, they know the chances of them staying are very high. Because the cost of changing your technology, as anyone knows, organizationally is huge. So, you know, we'll, we'll continue to work on that. We've actually made some progress in the last, uh, last year or so. We'll see where that goes. Well, the key thing is getting these vendors to agree on what's called data interchange standards. You know, how do you pass data in a uniform manner from tool to tool? Yeah, and they won't. There's some anti-competitive reasons they don't want to do it, uh, but there are often times where, you know, cooperating in those areas may actually enhance their market marketability if they can be convinced. Uh, our our financial our gorilla in the room is our financial software. They're the biggest vendor yeah. by far, and they pretty much won't let anyone do anything, any mm -hmm. other vendor do anything. You, know, you can export data to the vendor. We right. are not open in our architecture to take any. Okay, they, won't, they won't receive, but they will export. Yeah, yeah, we have to deal with the realism of, of what exists. Mm -hmm. um, <coughs> communication, again, under Matt. This, this is a bit of a narrow scope. You'll see there's other communication <coughs> implied in many of the other goals, some of which we've discussed. <coughs> One of the things that's been clear uh, with discussions of the board in the last year or so especially is um, we need to take a look at your appointed boards and specifically you have a written policy it's called article 2 appointed boards um, you will be seeing that at some point I'll, I'll say in the late fall um, we'll probably come to you once or twice with some ideas and want to get some input um, looking at the selectman's policies some of them are still fine you've already heard from town council the liquor policy could use a little bit of polish mm -hmm. and my guess is most of your policies could use a little bit of it was, these were written, in some cases, 20, 25 years ago. Um, so appointed boards is part of that, and, and the goal that's right after it is, is integral to it. It's to improve your communication with appointed boards and vice versa. Um, I think I described to you a month or two ago that we'd accomplished that at the staff level, and a lot of that was by making full-time employees in Gene's department. So instead of having a lot of half-time people, we have fewer full-time people. And a half-time person, such as our assessor, has no time to communicate with other employees about what's going on. They just don't. Um, a full-time person mm -hmm. that's always around has a much more likelihood. And I know Gene had a staff meeting today. And once you establish the staff communication, then the board communication can follow. If you don't have it, there's almost no point. I, th I think we're at a pretty good point, would you say, Gene, that staff communication now is good? Yes. So next week, again, you'll have an opportunity. Um, you know, hopefully a lot of the boards do show up in some fashion. You'll have an opportunity to start that process. 
Um, as some of the members of the board here know, uh, we have to discuss the role of how do appointed boards provide community information. And um, you know, one of the boards has statutory authority and all the rest, and they are appointed, and all the rest need to go through Matt Cornellis. Um, and it's not so much for censoring opinions, it's really just to make sure it's not contradicting anything else that the selectmen are trying to accomplish. And that's a tough, that's a tough area. You know, there's, there's been a discussion, as, as some of you know, with some of the boards, and when I say some, I can think of three that come to mind right away, um, where there's been a discussion about, you know, your right to free speech, how you don't have it as a member of town government. No one in this room has it. Not the way you did as a resident or a citizen. Um, you know, if a volunteer uh, wants to speak out as a board member or as a chair of a board, it's just as if any of you or I or anyone else was doing that has the same legal impact. Um, that's not something that volunteers have ever really been told. And you know, maybe part of the process from now on is making sure. Several years ago, um, before our current town clerk, so that's probably eight years ago, we had one or two sessions with the Attorney General out here, and it was half for open meeting law and half for discussion with the selectmen and the appointed boards in terms of the expectations and the rules and the regulations. And I think you need to go back to that. You probably don't need to do it every year, um, but we should at least have an improved packet to hand out to volunteers yeah, as we they get appointed. At all. No, we really don't. I, I've seen some in the past. We do have some, but it's also out of date. I wasn't willing to hand it out, and that ought to be part of this. Um, you know, website I use as a generic name. There has to be social media uh, <coughs> improvements. What's the name of the site we found that no one knows who it is? The Reading Post, if anybody knows. <coughs> yeah, it's actually pretty good. Yeah. I don't know what's running. Is it like, is it like the patch, or is it like? No, it's almost, it's almost like a blog type setup, Who's but it's like that? a real. We have tried. Jane has asked, but we haven't. We yeah. haven't got any response. But it's see, the address seemed to be at the high school. What's though, the name so. of it? The writing See if I can find it. The writing's so good, it's got to be a They're student. probably covering. <laughs> they're probably yeah, covering this good. meeting right now. So if anybody's out there, the Reading Post. I think it's the Reading, 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 Reading Post. The Reading Post. The Reading Post. It's on Facebook. It's actually well written. It is. I mean, it's very good. compared to most of the things. <laughs> Careful. <laughs> <laughs> not the, not contact us. There isn't even a person. Person. Christ. Yeah. <laughs> Here it is. Look at that. Wow. Yeah. It's like a parallel universe out there. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Anyone in here doing this? <laughs> no. They do a good job. Well, yeah, they do do a good job. I only started looking at it a week ago. Yeah. But there you go. There's a lot of information. It's a lot of stuff up there. Um, I read the uh, summary of the FinCom meeting a week or so ago. It was re really well written and right on point. And and not something that would have been obvious to someone who didn't know what was being discussed, kind of. Yeah. Joey, do you know who's hmm. doing this? Do you have any idea who's behind this? Nope. Do they have a masthead or something? On it says contact. I wonder if There's a generic story. email address. It, it's, yeah. it's not. It's a, a fill-in-the-blank oh. thing. And Here. They're not oh. responsive. And it, as, it, as has been said, it lists the high school as a, an address, but superintendent told him yeah. yesterday, he said, I have no idea what that is. <laughs> that's probably one of your kids. I said, you know, that's what we thought until school was over. Yeah, school So over. now I'm thinking maybe it's a college kid, but I don't know. Whoever's doing it's doing a nice job. <laughs> Make sure you put that I said nice things up there. <laughs> we're, writing it as we're, we're writing it as we're, as we're doing it. Yeah. <laughs> Anybody look to see if their domain was uh, public or private? Didn't look. Yep. You know, here's their well, author. Well, let me give some praise to our local guy here. I, I think the, I must say the quality of the reporting in the Chronicle has improved quite a bit in the last year. So, you're one of the guys. <laughs> <laughs> uh, and the last goal is a little bit nebulous, but um, the library building project doesn't seem to follow under communication. Uh, but it will. Once, once the building is open, um, Amy and her staff will have their hands full with lots of things, and one of them is how to assess communication. You know, you're going to have a lot of new technology. 
How are you going to use it? You're going to have a beautiful conference room. How is that going to be used? Yeah. So I think there will be some room for discussion and, and communication. I, I couldn't really fit this in anywhere. It had to go f you know, in the, as the fifth goal under fifth group, though. <laughs> Um, you know, and I've, I've obviously I've talked to Kevin <coughs> Earl a lot about your technology, and you're going to have really powerful stuff. You're going to have good stuff, as you should. <coughs> Fourth group on policy, and again, these last two are a little bit longer term. Um, I guess you haven't really heard from the bylaw committee yet. You've just heard from me. But uh, we do have, uh, I can't remember, three to five bylaws on tap for a November town meeting. Most of them are driven by changes in the charter, and then there's one or two other minor changes. That's going to be fun. Well, that's why we have it booked for, is it eight nights now? I can't remember. Do you remember? It's six or eight nights. It's, it goes into December, just so you know. Um, another uh, policy item for you to uh, tackle, and we'll take a start at it, is your operating procedures. And again, there needs to be some changes because of some charter changes. So that's more catch up. And then um, goal 18, Paul is quite familiar with uh, licenses. Um, that's part of that is the alcohol, the liquor license, mm -hmm. the town council's told you, and we may as well tackle the whole thing. Um, as, as we've learned through this town council and looking at past work in, in many cases, many, many years old, a fresh look at legal work always results in something that's rearranged and made simpler because it's a document that's been attached and appended to for years. Oh, let's throw it in there. Let's throw it in there. Maybe mm -hmm. it fits over there. Uh, and it's just a patchwork quilt. So, uh, you know, a constant revision of things is always a good idea, the extension of the time. <coughs> I want to, I mentioned this to you last winter, I want to uh, have a legal review of all our collective bargaining contracts. Um, that yep. would sort of seem to be something you do all the time. We've never done it on the town side. We have taken specific issues naturally to Labor Council. And so I don't have any reason to think there's anything in the contracts that are not legal. But I just want a nice overview and make sure someone looks at them all and mm -hmm. says, yeah, it's fine. Same with our personnel policies. So it's the kind of thing every so often you really need to have someone Does else. it make sense for Ray to do this as a cross check? Um, this will actually be Labor Council. So we have a different firm that I hardly ever I, talk to you about. I know that, but couldn't this be like a quality check yeah. that Ray, Ray does against their work? They've never looked at these. Yeah. Labor Council. Hmm. We've yeah, gone I to know. him for yeah. very small, yeah. specific things. So, so who wrote them in back in the day? It had to, I mean, they had to be I cut and pasted from years to year, right? I think they came uh, with the start of the town. I don't know. <laughs> I don't really know. Mayflower. Um, but you don't recall it in memory that they were... Absolutely not. I, I don't even recall it. <laughs> I, I go back 10 years, and I probably go back another eight with Carol Roberts, mm -hmm. uh, who was our HR director, said, no, it's never happened. Yeah. So. Did anyone ever complain? No, again, I don't think if there was something illegal in there, you can be sure that we would have heard about it. Um, but it's a good idea to just look at them. And, uh, you know, with one of the unions last year, um, between uh, sessions, I rearranged the whole contract for whatever reason. I just didn't like the organization of it. Uh, and maybe it's as simple as that, but I made it what I thought was a little more understandable by the same token we looked at zoning and the charter. It's just, you know, it's something that kept being slapped together over many years tuck this in here, tuck this in there, and just redo the whole thing, because it's say what we want. Um, but I don't have the bandwidth to do that, and that's why I'm talking to, again, our, our retired HR administrator for this one, and then she's on board. And then our current HR administrator will tackle the last one, and that's the town personnel policies. <coughs> and I think we're going to talk about that Thursday at a department head meeting briefly. Um, again, I, we have no reason to suspect there's anything illegal, but uh, personnel uh, you know, law change. It changes. And if we're not changing our personnel policies, we're out of step. That's a and dynamic. Yeah. And, you know, you know the way our organization is staffed. We don't have people hired to do things like that. We have to make a conscious effort to stop what we're doing, step over to the side, and do things Something like this. Doesn't, yeah. like, a lot of the stuff, uh, like, like Mass Municipal have sort of a, a, a list of best practices on a variety of these um, type of issues that you know, they vote, you know, instead of trying to go reinvent the wheel 351 times, yeah. like when somebody has done something and it works, we're kind of look at Sherm, it. So the person I was going to say, yes. Yeah. We're using Sherm, who's the, the HR group. We're using a lot of their boilerplate stuff. So we're not reinventing the wheel at all on that. Um, as for the labor contracts, I think 
there's probably standard ones, but we want to really tailor them to our use. So. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and just to give you a little more color on the collective bargaining, um, we don't sit in a room with unions with lawyers on either side. Yeah, yeah that's good. Um, occasionally, you know, a given union might bring in a rep for a topic, but it's not a lawyer. Um, that's unusual. Most towns are lawyered up on both mm -hmm. sides. That just slows things down. It, it makes the process more expensive and yes, more argumentative. Um, and you know, if we find things in this, obviously, I'm going to sit down and talk to the unions before we do anything. This isn't meant to take any action. It's just meant to discover. Um, then we get to the last group of the long-term planning. You know, and the first one, financial sustainability, will solve this one. I'm not so sure. This is all long-term stuff that planners like, uh, and Gene will be in charge. The first three are related to economic development. I looked at things a little differently than, than Gene and CPDC does. Um, rather than look at the different items such as zoning, parking, and so forth, I just grouped it down in geography, downtown. So one of them is downtown. Clearly there's a lot of issues wrapped into the downtown. And then there's other priority development areas. You remember there's four PDAs. Um, I don't know that all four by any means are equally weighted in importance. This group will take a crack at whatever they think, other than downtown, the next most important area is. I'm guessing it's down at the light department. I don't remember which number that was. Okay, so you know we'll, we'll we'll see. And then, somewhat of an aside from those two geographies, is this notion of housing. Um, Reading is very proactive and has very done a very good job planning on housing. We have a housing production plan, for instance. But I think it's really important to take this to the next level and to get engaged you know, through our economic development position that will be hired to go out and figure out where we want housing and then where the market wants to sell housing. Uh, so that will be interesting. Do we, are we advanced a l any further on finding, filling that position? Or? Yeah. yeah. I'll, I'll talk about that shortly. The 24th goal, I think, is really important. It's something that you know, effectively we've heard from the community from the last three or four years. Mm -hmm. um, and I would uh, enlist the help of the Permanent Building Committee on this as needed, is uh, you know, through the Facilities Department, assess the condition of all the buildings and the space needs. This, the town, the capital that town, is town and school. I would include schools in this one, yes. Now, where does infrastructure play here? Uh, it would seem to me we want to keep that assessed also. Roads and pipes. Um, you know, I hadn't thought of that. Soon the gym damage. Uh, uh, ro roads and pipes need to be assessed long term. Already done with the road survey that's done by, by public. Works. Yeah, we well, do it needs, it we needs do to a be, better job. Though. Yeah. Um, like so a 50 year plan. A 50 year plan is what I'm talking about. Say again? We're not doing this at all today. Right. We're not formally assessing town buildings. No, it just suddenly appears. Yeah. I, I need this or Crisis, I need that yeah. or we need a new senior center, you know, whatever it is. Now that we have the right group, the Permanent Building Committee is actually tasked with doing this with right. the Facilities Director annually, yeah. is assessing what your, not, not space needs, but what your condition of your existing buildings are. Right. Their Do job would not like that now? I mean, nothing. I mean, I'm sure that you have a general idea, you know. We have a, a good capital plan, and, and we also have all of our equipment aged in all the buildings, so we know what's coming up for replacement. Right. But a formal assessment of all the buildings, the whole inventory has not been done. Will you be doing like a facilities condition index and looking at how they're rated exactly. against other buildings? Exactly. You know something, I think that there's a real value in that when you start to have a community conversation about things like we talked about, you know, in, in the first goal. I mean, where are, are you going to have to have debt exclusion projects? And you're going to find things here that. Right. You, you, I mean, you kind of know it's there, but when you, when you pull it together, I think this is really an important one. Then you have the whole open space needs. I mean, that, it's not a building, but it's, it's land. Well, yeah, because it talks about land. I mean, not, not, certainly not just building. The trouble with that is you have the trouble with Goal 24 expanding to be well, the work of the fund. Yeah. If you just did the schools, the town hall, and one or two other town buildings, that would be hugely important. Yeah, and this, this planning group can assess the priorities. You know, here's all the things we could do. Here's the order we'll do them in. 
And again, for those of you that haven't seen it firsthand, the Permanent Building Committee is a strong resource for this. In fact, actually, that was written in the bylaw, too, was one of the things, was to Annual. basically, you know, kind of do a review of, of our assets. I think, bring, I, you know, I got the sense that they're going to be bringing some ideas to town meeting on their, their, their particular Yeah, they character. want to come to you, and, and I have to say, we're kind of running out of real estate to go to a November town meeting with theirs, and I think that's okay. Um, they may need two meetings with you, one to uh, share their concerns about how the bylaw is written and what they are comfortable with and not comfortable with, and then to leave you with some thoughts that they might want to circle back a second time and get your opinion on what do you think they should be versus what they described they think they should be and what the <coughs> bylaw says. So I'll give you one topic that's, that's pretty hot, and Joe can certainly jump in. Um, some or all of the members are concerned about, I'll say the word liability. <coughs> um, they don't intend to be or pretend to be uh, project managers on a daily basis for any project. But if you read the wording of the bylaw, that's what it says. It's not the spirit, it's not what's meant. And they said, if that's not what it's meant, you better have it say what you mean. Yeah. And they're right. That summarizes, I think, their biggest concern. And then there's some smaller issues they want to just say, did you mean this or did you mean that? What is it that, because they don't want to do things that you don't want them to do, basically. They want to understand from you clear direction. And then they're on their own. They're very self-sufficient. But they want to make sure, um, would you say ad ac accurately, they don't want to be a policy-making body? That's correct. Yeah, they want to have a project that, they want to be able to look at a, a project that's brought forward to them and then assess it. <coughs> And see if it's it's a viable project, and then um, bring us through the whole process, and then hand it over to an owner's project manager, which you're required to do by state law anyway. Yeah. The problem is we didn't have a permanent building committee to run the the formation of a permanent building committee yeah, in front of when we exactly. kind of thought about it, so. and that's what they're doing. Yeah. yeah. You know, they've spent are. maybe half their time talking about themselves. Just they've built such an interesting template for what public committee should be doing, I think. I mean, you yeah, that's a good point. Uh, you know, talked to several of them um, recently. You know, I was involved in the interview process to, you know, oh, yeah. reappoint some people. Um, what they're doing is really, we really have to pay a lot of attention to how that committee is unfolding. It's actually finding out what's wrong with itself mm -hmm. before it yeah, they're doing a lot of self-appraisal. Yeah. You know, a, a revolutionary concept in, yep. in town government, I think. And I think it's, we really need to use that as a pattern. Yeah, you're right. And, and they've said to a person that the reason they're doing it is because they know the individuals in the room won't be there forever, and they want to make sure that the organizational structure is strong yeah. so that it doesn't rely on any of them. Right. You know, you couldn't ask for more, honestly. No. You really couldn't. And the last one is land. We need to, um, as long as Mr. Brown's still in the audience, you know, we'll need his expertise because he knows, he knows yeah, everything. He's, 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 he's more often than the chief. He's, yeah. he's, he's driving back right now. Yeah. Um, <laughs> yeah. he, he knows every Watch stitch it. of land the town owns and some that we didn't know. <laughs> right. Um, so it's important, I think, to show you some kind of inventory of land. W will this include tax title? Yes. Okay. Yeah, we've, in the past, this, this was, I forget exactly how Peter organized it, but it was a list of town land in some way, shape, or form, and two or three or three or four single-family lots were sold. I can think yeah. of three. I can't remember if there's yeah. four. Uh, and that was good. That so was, right, was recent, too. Yeah. yeah, it was maybe four, four or five years right. ago. I can't remember what it was done as part of. Maybe it was part of the Oakland Road discussion. Um, but you ought to be aware of what your assets are, and in conjunction to the findings on space needs, you know, I, I assume we don't own any land that is going to solve any of the space needs. Oakland Road is big enough. Yeah. I don't think anything else we own is going to matter. Uh, but we ought to know. And, you know, different residents have come to Gene or I with ideas that on paper seem simple, and then when you get involved legally, they get very complex of the town owns this tiny piece of land next to my house. Why don't you just sell it to me? seems like the most logical thing in the world. Put it out in the act of tax rules. It depends on the background of that lot as to how simple or complicated that is. But I can think of two that we're working on now. And, yeah, 
I think one of them you'll probably see in the next month. Hmm. So those, those are the goals. Yep. Uh, yes, Dan. Uh, along the lines of my comment a few minutes ago on infrastructure, may I suggest a goal 24A? It's kind of related to 24, but it's different. Assess condition of transportation and utility infrastructure, especially relative to future economic growth. And we, we've always, you know, when Gillette Stadium was built, there was a lot of discussion with the state about infrastructure commitments. Uh, if we make major changes uh, to our industrial area, uh, who knows what we might need to do down there. I think we need to keep that all in mind. Plus, having a ready inventory of what we've done, where our streets are, and publish that. Maybe yeah, let I the folks know what the street plans are a little more than we've done. I think it's kind of hidden in the bowels of DPW, <laughs> but not really publicized. So. A lot of things could be. <laughs> you don't want Sorry to about that. Yeah. <laughs> That's kind of how I feel it is right now. But I'd like to add that. Yeah. You know, we, we have a new town engineer now, and he's yeah. got a different set of instructions given to him. Mm -hmm. um, you know, Jeff, you chime in as you, as you can, but I remember when the DPW would come in front of the board maybe every year or maybe every two years and do a pavement condition index presentation. Yeah. Uh, I can't tell you the last time that's happened. A long time. I know there's been mm -hmm. some issues with the software. That's one of the tasks they have is to come up with a quantitative way of assessing yeah. the roads again. And if the old system that we bought doesn't work, that's fine. There's others out there. Well, actually, yeah. yeah. We're actually, right now, we're going through the process of doing an inventory, an actual field inventory, which every four or five years, the, the plan you should go out to actually physically look at each street. Uh, we've got uh, BHP, who's the engineering firm we've had from the beginning. They did the original analysis. Uh, and even at this point, once this is done, we can generate a, you know, a uh, PCI favorite condition index report and come in and, and present that to the board. Uh, so timeliness wise, right. it's it's, uh, it's right to do that now once we get this field work done. Uh, but we do use that favorite management plan every year. Yeah. It's not the Bible you go by when you put, put together your uh, street paving program for the year, but use it as a guide. I mean, realistically, what you like to do is do a, a combination plan where you do a little reclamation, you do some pavement maintenance, you do some milling overlay, that's that's the goal, and that keeps your, uh, your, your, your the streets that are in pretty decent shape from getting worse and, and, and putting together a plan as you go forward, but well, we could do that. Uh, and, and integrate it with your water and sewer yes. improvements uh, in a place where the public can see what we're doing year to year and what the sequence of events is. Yep. So that's what I'm getting at with that goal. Well, you know, I think it's really helpful for people when they start, when they see something like what you're talking about, Dan, and as you're describing it, Jeff, they begin to understand how their money's being spent. Yeah. And I think people want to know, I think they should know how their money's being spent. And, you know, if in this kind of an assessment process, we can make that public, you know, it is public information yeah, as it's available, it's but it's not very available. The more of that you could do, the more comfortable I think people feel with why they have the taxes they have and how they're being spent. Yeah, I, I terrified uh, DPW staff and the GIS administrator a few years ago when I said I want a real-time map oh, that I can look at any time that tells me exactly, exactly what's going on in this town. <laughs> oh boy. <laughs> exactly. That's what I got. I got a lot of oh boys. <laughs> so they said they, they tell you to call Google? No, they said we'll wait for the next town manager. <laughs> I mean, that is an impossible task, but that's really what you want, is that kind of tool. Um, let me, and it's really hard. We, we try to do it in the capital plan, which is one kind of visual, hmm. but that just plans out how money is spent. It doesn't give you geography or location. It says, you know, we have a 50-year water main capital improvements plan or whatever it is. So is the board supportive of that? Thought. Absolutely. Yeah, I'll just tuck, tuck that in right. 24. Okay. That's a good idea. Well, the 24 kind of stands on its own because that's that's like buildings mm. and space. So I don't want to dilute okay. that. Yeah. Okay. Um, any final thoughts on goals? Nope. Good so job. It's a little bit of a more focused list than other years. I, I think it was time to focus a little yeah. bit more. I think you can actually quantify it. That we have not been able to do for the last several years. I mean, yeah. we can look at stuff, but it's it's pretty tough to quantify goals. That this is going to make it easier, I think. Why do I think we had like eight pages of this stuff the last couple of years? Is that true? Um, that was more of uh, 
town manager. Sub goals, goals. Oh, yeah. We it depends keep as we, we kinda, start. I told you, we've got to keep him on a short leash. Yeah, <laughs> I know. 30 days at a time with the election. Oh, um, you know, it depends on what kind of reporting you want, because for some of these goals, you could probably write you a couple pages each, and yeah. then you want to get something this thick. Well, or I mean, you just what, like a box I mean, with so much complete. Or when we'll flesh out the, yeah. you know, stuff that's got to come first. And I do think you're right, Barry. I think you could take this a block of these four or five goals in each category, and you build a little executive summary. Yeah. Um, and it yeah, I, I happen to like one-page summaries of things. I learned this from one of my uh, <laughs> MBA professors at Babson <laughs> who used to run GE International. Yep. He said, um, the project has to be explained on one piece of paper, two sides. And if it can't be explained, we do not do it, period. That, that's good guidance for the override stuffer. Yeah. And I was, he said, if it's more complicated than that and I can't understand it, mm -hmm. we're not doing it. It's simple. So I like one or two pages. Um, for the second agenda item, you know, this is kind of free form discussion. Uh, I have some guidance for a discussion, but I think the first thing is this is the first time the, the five of you have been here and the department had certainly to discuss the listening sessions and what was learned. We probably all have slightly different takeaways. And, and I know some of us have discussed this you know, in small groups. Uh, but I thought it was a good opportunity to hear what you heard. Hearing nothing. <laughs> <laughs> Who was listening? Assuming nobody was present. Who was listening at these listening sessions? One of the things I heard was a wide range of knowledge walking in the door. Yeah. From current events, I'll say. Uh, some people were right up to speed and you know, would yep. battle a town ma um, a meeting member, and then others um, were equally as interested and, and certainly capable and just had no background at all, zero. But the one thing I don't think I heard anyone say clearly was what they were prepared to part with in the way of current services. Like, one guy said, don't pave my street. Yeah, that's it. <laughs> that was it. That was it. That was it. For three sessions. Yeah. I think. <laughs> we took his name too. His neighbors are now tarred with that. <laughs> so that's significant, I think. Yeah, and the other thing, you know, when he asked somewhat of a rhetorical question of um, how would you balance the budget, how do, I don't know. I, I don't know what you do. You know, show it to me on an app and I can do it, but I can't do it in the absence of that. So. When the question becomes, you know, we need a million dollars, where do we find it? No one knows where you're looking, what's available, what's an option. And I know some of us struggle with providing an answer. And, you know, the answer I gave while we're in the senior center is to look around. We have a senior center. Do we have to have a senior center? It's optional. Is it nice to have? Of course it is. Uh, but you have to look at every asset the town has and every service the town provides and decide is it an essential function of government? Yeah. And, and the answer is not yes, because we've always done it. If you were starting a government today, on the bare bones, make a list. What would be on there? And the answer is a lot less than what government does. So then you start adding on, and that's fine. You, know, you start prioritizing. And the discussion that quickly evolved was there's, there's constituents for all of our services, and all of them are very protective of that service. And they don't mind if you get rid of someone else's service or just not theirs. Well, to that point, I mean, there was, I mean, there was somebody that said, "Of course, you have to pick up my trash. Absolutely, don't shovel the walks in front of the businesses." Right. Um, so, you know, I, that whole well, easy for them to say. Yeah, <laughs> what I, the business yeah. to say about that. <laughs> so, I guess the point is, I think that mm. in those public listening sessions. They were all over the block, um, but mm -hmm. there wasn't a whole lot of, I'm ready to give anything up. No. Um, I mean, and that was the first question we posed, and there was limited, if any, of what people wanted to give up. But I think that ties to why you get no answer when you ask the question, what would you give up? Because one, you've got embedded constituencies. Two, you're so far from what should government do you're, you're well into the 10 decades of what are we doing and why can't we keep doing it. It's almost like you need to, in addition to Bob's kickoff point, I know you did this in the, in the meetings, was 
here's where we're spending money, here's where we're growing over the last 20 years, and here's why it's wired to continue that way. I wonder if there's, it, for the September 1 meeting, whether it helps or not to have a, here's what government should be doing at the core, here's what we're doing beyond it, or, or beyond that point. And so we're not just talking about how to finance it. Well, you know, if, <coughs> if we're operating with negative increase in revenue, for example, um, so let's say that you, you know you're at a zero growth rate as far as your revenue is concerned, or you have to have the Plan B discussion. Yeah, yes. So I mean, you know, to kind of follow that bouncing ball a little bit, if that's where you are, then that kind of demands what you're asking, which is, mm. what are the essentials that government has to do? Because we're going to have to. That's subjective. You know, that's a, it, very possible we're going to be faced with that exact question. Um, that's a good way to catalyze the conversation around Plan B. If we have to go to a Plan B, what are the essential elements? Forget all the nice to have. What are the must-haves? And then you start from there. I don't know if folks think that's, thinks that's important or well, whether they think I that's mean, distraction. Don't we have some requirements as a municipality of things to provide? I think we, there must be such a list. They're called unfunded mandates, yeah. yeah. <laughs> a lot of them. Yeah. yeah, we do. I think it's worthwhile to get those up on the table to talk about them. You know, if you took 25,000 opinions on this, you'd get, I don't know, 10,000 different answers, though. Yeah. So there's a legal answer, and that's fine, but public safety. I think pretty much everyone would agree that's necessary, but how much? That's yeah. impossible to quantify. Right. I mean, there are studies, and the chief knows, you know, per resident, this many officers. And depending on your density and depending on your proximity to urban centers, that numbers change. But still, it's an art. It's not a science. Yeah. You know, how much? Yeah. Uh, pick up the trash. Everyone knows you have to do that. That doesn't mean you don't have to charge a fee for it because you're allowed to do that. Right. Yes, uh, and, and one of the takeaways that I had was that Generally, most people seem to be satisfied with the level of services here in town. That there wasn't, yeah. you know, I mean, there were obviously some stuff like, you know, with the schools about whether we should have this course or that course. But in general, yeah. pe people were generally satisfied um, with the level of services that they're getting. And that a lot of people, not all, were willing to undertake to pay more for those services. But they, but they wanted clear direction from us of, of, of what, it, what, where's that money going to go? How much is it going to be? Um, and they wanted to sort of understand what it was going for, um, you know. And, and that's the, the one part, obviously, we haven't come up with yet. Um, and the other takeaway that I that I that I had is that a lot of people were supportive of looking at the structure of the taxes. Um, a lot of sentiment for trying to help seniors in the community, you know, um, and not just, oh, how much of my tax is going to go up. I mean, looking at potentially um, structuring how we actually divide up the pie, um, there seems to be a lot of interest in that in, in a way to be for fairness issues um, and to look at just beyond their own economic stuff, but looking at the community as a whole. So I think that people are open to kind of just hearing what, what we're going to put forward. And, um, in, a, in a general way, I think you're absolutely right, but when you get to some specifics, that's where, it, at a certain point, if somebody's going to say yes, for example, or no to an override, it's probably going to be, sometimes it's going to be visceral just because, right. you know, there are certain people that say, yes, we must, other people, that, and they will always say that because that's their inherent right. Outlook. The DNA. Yeah, and then there'll be others that say, no, never, because right. inherently that's the way that they look at it. I think, you know, the, the larger group in the middle wants a practical answer as to what it is. I mean, okay, what are my taxes going to go up? How long are they going to go up? What's going to maintain? Is it going to add something? Does anything have to be subtracted? I mean, you could really break it down to, you know, four or five key components um, on September 1st. I think, you know, I mean, if, I, now that doesn't mean you can get it done in five minutes because you've got five components, but I think
think it is sort of that simple. I think that's what people were asking us, though. Yeah. Uh, yeah. You know, to, to provide that kind of, you know, you know, what is it that you want us to do? Um, and, you know, and obviously people will reserve judgment you yeah. know, for that. But they were, you know, I, I think most people were receptive. I think also most people really, you know, who maybe not, not, not the not the veterans who go to all the meetings, but maybe the, we saw a lot of first-timers, a lot of new people. Especially at the Pleasant um, Street one. Yeah, that was uh, good, a good meeting. And also the one at Parker, yeah. I saw yeah. a lot of new, new people. It's like, you know, I think they came away with an appreciation for what we did. Yeah. Um, and that this stuff is hard. Yeah. Uh, yeah. And, and so it's not, people, and I think people came in with an open mind and listening. Yes, right. some people are always going to yeah, be for it. Some people are going to be against it. You know, just out of, you know, part of, you know, their whole, their whole, the way that they're thinking. But I think most people were just there to really listen and understand and, um, you, you know, open to, to kind of being led. I, the thing that we needed to be reminded of is that uh, many folks don't understand the fundamentals of what an override is and what it isn't. Uh, the fact that when you pass an override, it affects all classes of taxation. You can't have an override to raise taxes on the commercial industrial property, but not on the residential. First first meeting, I think there were a lot of people who thought you could do that. Yeah. yeah but I'm happy people are now well, I think taking away better ideas. Well, I think thought you could be selective. <laughs> right. That, um, that's, that was a takeaway that right. I had, that people thought you could just kind of... Just raise their taxes. Yeah. Yeah. Um, and yeah. They assume that you had a lot more tools when you right. have almost no but tools. But state law is not... Yeah. Allowing us to. Well, I think the other thing that a lot of people thought, I mean, a lot of people do not, they connect a debt exclusion and an override in the same breath. Right. And they kind of don't realize that, you know, when you do a, an override, you permanently raise taxes. I mean, that that's a function of what happens. You know, that base rate comes up and that's that. Um, you know, they, many people, think that that's what happened when the high school was built or that's what happened when the library was built. So I think it becomes yeah. incumbent on us to really clarify so that they can, they, the voting public, can make a, make the best informed decision possible. And then, you know, we deal with their decision. I mean, that's really what it boils down to. Um, and it, these are quite, these other things that you have up here, are the questions that they, I believe, have to have answered. Right. Yeah, and I'd be interested in your feedback on the first one, how long should an override be designed to last them? I would suggest a minimum of 2025. That's a minimum, I think. Right. And, you know, I'll show you. It goes into all the math you'd like, but it gets harder as you make yeah. it longer. Yeah. Yeah. Say, explain what you mean by that, Bob. Um, it, it goes back to the cocktail napkin I showed you this morning. And we weren't drinking cocktails, I might add. No, we weren't. Um, and that, that visual is the simplest way, and I'll just try to describe it. The fundamental problem of Reading in most communities in Massachusetts, if not all, is that your natural expense rate is growing at faster than pro what Prop right. 2 and a half allows your revenues to grow at. So the only communities that are not having this problem are those that have large open space that can still be developed and produce new taxes that don't exist today. So you have a lot of open space, you have a lot of untapped reserves on your revenue side, we don't. Um, the natural run rate of expenses since the last override is three and a quarter percent at the operating budget level. Um, that does not include things like debt capital, health insurance and so forth. Mm -hmm. But it also turns out that over the last 13 years, that's been also a close number. Mm -hmm. um, we don't have revenues growing at three and a quarter. You know, maybe they're three. And it doesn't seem like a big difference, and it isn't for any short period of time. But over 10 years, it, it's big. And in the right. past, there was better growth in state aid. Yes. Which stopped happening around well, 15 it years ago. It shrunk. It didn't yeah. only, you know, yeah. not grow. It half shrunk. of what it was. It half. shrunk. Cut in half since 2000. Yeah, I, I think I've said this to FinCom, and you know, it's simple, but it's it's really pretty accurate. If you could cure the state aid shortfall and the health insurance future, we'd be fine. We could deal with Prop 2 and a half. Or state government so did it. So if it was Prop 2 and a half and state was held accountable yes. for that in state aid on the revenue side, and then health insurance somehow was also held limited at 2 and a half, we wouldn't need to be here. No. We'd be fine. And that's
that's a simplification, but those are the two biggest drivers, one on each side, revenues and expenses. At the meetings you've attended, did you get that aha moment around that statement where people figured out that this is going to, this never ends? Um, not, a, not as much as I think we need to get, because that's the most important single point to be made, which is we're asking you not because we did something wrong or there's, you know, there's something new we need. We're asking you because every so often we have to. Or you get less next year. Well, you know. So your taxes cannot provide the things you have today and forever. They can't. That graphic, I mean, I love to be your straight man because you showed me that graphic this morning on the napkin and <laughs> it's, it crystallizes the explanation of what you just talked about. I mean, the mm -hmm. way that those, the, the way that the expenses run and the revenues run, and if you look at those, they don't trail up. They they diverge. This. Yeah. And an override always just offsets and inevitably right. will eventually cross again. Yep. Will eventually and, cross it, again. It, and it's it is never ending. If you look at that if you look at that graphic and it it really helps people understand. Okay. Yeah, now if one of the tools that we had available was um, instead of doing a dollar figure override, we did a percent growth, yeah. we'd be all set. Do prop three or three and a half, we'd be all set. Because then you'd equalize revenue and, and expenses. In the minute that a voter started to convert that into real dollars, they would their head would explode. Well, you know, if, if you're looking at an override for 10 years, let's say, um, for the first 10 years, it would be the same. If you did a prop whatever is required to balance a 10-year budget and a dollar figure, if you've done your math right, it's the same. But after 10 years, you wouldn't have to ask again if you've done the percent method as opposed to the dollar method. That's but the, the exponential difference. growth of that yeah. Mm. Oh, yeah. would be a runaway freight train. Oh, yeah. In the first year, I don't know, pick a number. It's a million or two million bucks. And then in the 10th year, it's eight or 10 million or whatever right. it is. Well, and then take it over and, and it's not unreasonable to think about a generation of 30 years. And, right. You know, what you've done is created an exponential growth of that number. I mean, it literally becomes $25 million yeah. Before, yeah. You, before you blink. And I think that the idea, I mean, the only rationale, when I look at Prop 2.5 and, and I've tried to, I've spent the last three years spending m much more time than any human being should trying to understand Prop 2.5, it almost is designed so that it causes the public to go, Oh, we got to do that every so many years. Yeah, I, I, I almost think it's like a safety valve. It, it absolutely yeah. is. Absolutely. You know, it makes it painful to, to do. Yeah. It. And, yeah. Uh, I mean, if you could do the percentage thing you're talking about and just let it run, mm -hmm. it would make everybody in this room's job a lot easier. However, then you have the um, geometric progression. Problem. Yeah, right. Then, right. Like I said, yeah. you know. That's why the legislature hasn't gone there or indexed it to inflation for right. those, that very reason, which I think is a good reason. It does make it mathematically an impossible equation to solve. No. It's just yeah. you defer the problem into the future. It is interesting, however, that their their spending mechanism knows no boundaries. <laughs> well, well I mean, it literally knows no boundaries. <laughs> and this is the reason that what point know, the, the aid off that track. comes to local communities, we send the money. I mean, yeah. we send the money in. Oh, yeah. It doesn't come back. No. You know, not so much. Um, not the way that it's growing in the other direction. I'd love to see some introspection at the state level about what, what their mission really causes them to have to deliver in the way yeah. of services. Good luck with that. First, yeah. yeah one, one comment. Yes, uh, you, you're describing this as a 10-year or 8-year and a, I guess a 13-year look back. Um, that's also novel in that we've never <coughs> planned for the point where the override would run out. We've always kind of waited until the pain threshold got high enough where we said uncle. Well, they kind of did in 2003, I think, as Bob alluded. Uh, was that a plan or was that a we're out of gas, we've got to do something? I, I don't. It was a it informal plan. me, but I don't think it was a financial plan in the real not, sense. Not a formal plan. It was more, hey, this ought to work for a while. <laughs> you, you know. were in trouble or trained? But it was, yeah, it was because there was no free cash. And it but was, you know, there was blood in the streets by that yeah, time. Yeah, and my recollection was. I learned this within the last six months. The first year of the override, some money was put in the stabilization fund and is still there today. And then it was just sp spend as you need to. 
So there was never really a financial plan, if you will, formally, because if you're just going to raise taxes by however much you raise them um, and you add in new expenses, you still have that gap. Yeah. So, you know, unless you assume it away, and, you know, we've talked about that internally, um, we could assume it away by saying health insurance is going to grow at two and a half and state aid is going to grow at three and a quarter. And then we're all set. And that's a paper exercise. We Until know it it's doesn't realistic, work. But it solves no. the problem. No. So to what end, though? Exactly. I mean, it solves the problem until the next time we, you know, come to the that's budget shortfall at the end of the next fiscal year. And that's pretty much what I'm telling you. That's how the last override was ap approached. Hmm. It wasn't approached with sophisticated financial analysis. I think it's incumbent it on us pain. to do exactly the opposite of that yeah. so that people can make a good decision. No, I, th I think we leave behind notes for people in eight to ten years or six years. You've got to start looking at this again because this mm -hmm. is about when you're going to be you know, if you don't realize it by now, this is the time when you're going to start be running out of resources. <laughs> Does it make sense to go to like 2027 to make it a 10 year thing? I mean, just because. I'll show you numbers. It, it, you add a year, it costs a lot of money. Yeah. Hmm. Only because, you know, in 10 years, is it safe to assume <coughs> one or two economic development projects would be providing revenue to the town? I think that's the eight year. I think in eight years you'll see something or you won't, or you won't mm -hmm. expect it. Well, you'll know at that you'll point. You'll know whether it's going to happen. It right. may not be totally right. developed by that point, but you'll but have you'll some forecast the pipeline. Of, yeah. 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 The pipeline yeah. is open and it's, and it's starting to fill. And if that's the case, then you take one course of action in eight years. If it's not, you've got to take a dramatically different one. What's been our biggest addition of new growth when the uh, Jordans and it Home is, Depot came online. Was I, that a million? I don't remember the numbers. I, I knew them at one point, and it's not nearly as much as you wish they were. The other side is also true, uh, John. If we have eight years of 8% health insurance increases, it ain't going to work. No, it blows, no. It blows up. The no. expense side is going to blow up long before the revenue side yields. It was more than a million, but I, I couldn't tell you how much. Well, and that's why on the revenue side, you just also can't plan you your way out of this. You take a look at a state budget that's being forecast the way it's being forecast, um, and then anticipate state aid on an ever-declining number, which is almost, if fiscal responsibility steps in tied to what that budget looks like, you've got the same problem, only it's inverted. You know, I mean, you got, on one side, you've got the expenses going up, and on the other side, you've got the revenue. This is why that you know mm. that graphic that we were playing around with when we were talking this morning is so descriptive. Um, I'm sorry, I threw that napkin out. <laughs> That's probably how Apple come back. That's how you. Apple computer started. Turn into a PDF, man. Come on, <laughs> technology. I should have taken a picture with my phone. Yeah, <laughs> I didn't think of that. Exactly. Um, the guy at the restaurant is probably making money with that. <laughs> <laughs> like a Van Gogh. Yeah. Um, what should an override accomplish? It's kind of a basic question, but it's, it's one that I know the schools have been asked. Um, you know, to me, the first point is pretty clear. That's a minimum. Um, schools in town have been growing at three and a quarter percent since the last override, and that's not, obviously, there was a bump during the override. Uh, you know, is your town and school, I, I think that's a really important point Barry raises, are your town and schools delivering the services that you think are appropriate? You know, you've heard for a few years that, uh, you know, both sides have cut. Um, doesn't seem like most people at the listening session minded. They didn't say, oh, this is terrible. Um, other than, I agree with you, there's been discussion of specific programming, classic uh, offerings in the high school especially. But there wasn't an outcry of, this is terrible, it's got to stop. Um, it was, you know, reasonably accepting of where we are. Although we've had parents parents before us that would voice yeah. that vocalize that very differently yeah I, I agree with that but um, and, and I've talked to the superintendent and I'm comfortable to speak for him in the sense that um, this is a minimum of what the schools will want very minimum is three and a quarter percent for as long as your override is, is going to schedule <coughs> You know, do you look back for the last two or three years and one of the discussions we heard at these listening sessions where you need to do a better job of explaining to me all the ways you've stretched out the last override. Mm -hmm. What have you cut? What have you made efficient? Yep. What have you done? What are we doing without? 
So, you know, John and I have those lists for the last at least three or four years. Should an override add some of those things back or some equivalent? Possibly. Or should an override uh, add those back and more things that we've always said, gee, if we had money, here are the other things that department has asked on the town side. You know, there's, there's a long list. Personally, I'd say tread lightly in that area. Yeah. Yeah, and as, as I said to the superintendent yesterday, you know, and I didn't show him this exactly. I said three and a quarter. It's gonna, it's gonna be a, a number that's pretty high in an override. You start adding things, you're making the yeah. situation worse. Yeah. Because you got a right. spending problem already, naturally by revenues and Correct. expenses right. not matching. So anything new any of us add is making the situation worse. Doesn't mean you shouldn't. Well, do if you it. add anything, you shrink that time scale. Yeah. You right. shrink that t time scale from eight to five. You um, could, yeah. It Easy wouldn't enough. take much to, right. to to cause that no. that to happen. I mean, yeah. the exponential yeah, change would be huge. I mean, forget about the school side, just on the town side. I mean, we talked about things that everyone here thought was really important. You know, a, you know, a second school resource officer. You know, the library staffing needs. We, we have to really begin to look at that. And those are, you know, for a brand new building. I mean, those are things that you know, everyone here would would agree that, you know, would not, you know, they're not wasteful. Um, yeah, so one of the questions could be, should an override build in some kind of agreed upon list now, a couple things, mm -hmm. and build in the capacity that every two years you add something mm -hmm. else or whatever? Yeah. Um, you know, that's a fair Plus question. Plus needs will change over time, right? Yeah. Yeah. We're, we're not going to identify them all now. Well, I mean, so, so to question, so I, not surprisingly, um, Chief Cormier, before you, you guys were here right. together um, last year, and um, and I remember Jim Cormier saying we're one incident away from cameras. Okay. Mm -hmm. And today I hear that Boston is implementing a camera program. Um, and to say that we're one incident away is probably an under-exaggeration. But I think, as I remember, that was that's like two or three hundred thousand dollars. Yeah, or more. And it could also you know, could also uh, require another full time staff person now. Right. Who, who's so, opposing that? So you, you, U.S. Department of Justice doing that, or the state? It's, I think the state. The state. I think there's some grant funding out there right now yeah. in different areas, or at least trial basis. But um, right now, there's nothing permanent for us right now. But so the point is, in the middle of this discussion. <coughs> Totally out of our control. Unfunded mandate. Unfunded you, could mandate. Have, you could have, yeah. you know, immediate half a million right. dollars come due. Correct. Uh, without even, uh, with no <coughs> way to capture that. Well, the good news is uh, most of that is one-time money. It's just the, it's just the one full-time equivalent you'd have to fund year over year. Well, yes, except that, so now, and so, yeah, you got the one-time cost, and you find a place for that. I mean, is that... Does that come from free cash? I don't know. Maybe or it does. Capitalized. Um, but now suddenly you've got operating budget expenses because now you've got a full-time person to manage the data. So now you don't get another resource officer because you see what I mean? The, you know, the, Absolutely. The, you know the, the snowball effect of but Why do, why do we as towns sit here and take that stuff? Why don't we wage a class action action against the state for imposing these <laughs> mandates? Well, without well, sending a long money. List of those that we could do uh, that. Why is there not more aggressive action from the cities and towns on that, this? That's been a long Revolution time constant. Yeah. starts yeah. here. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, this has to have an end to it. It's, a, it's not an uh, it's not an unfair question. It's a very fair question. Very fair question. More people should be asking it. I don't I know what the answer our, is. I remind our legislators every so often how close yeah. Quebec came to seceding. Yeah. Fifty two to forty eight it was a little uh -huh. closer than that. So well, I'm not. Don't put words in my mouth. <laughs> <laughs> That's what I heard. Just don't tread on me. <laughs> oh boy, here we go. Uh, <laughs> careful there. Um, Sharon and I talked a little bit, and these are both of ideas, although some of them are a little bit more mine. Um, we suggest these are things that should be baked into an override discussion, regardless. One is to encourage free cash to be uh, used less in balancing budgets by FinCom, and I'm pretty yeah. sure they're on board with that now. It didn't that FinCom did raise, their, raise the policy, too? They're raising they the reserve. They haven't done anything formally, but they talked about, about it with yeah. Sharon last, uh, last time. At their last meeting. Are we better served to manage the, the use rate, or are we better served to manage the minimum balance? Which, 
Uh, two different things, I guess I'd say. I've never liked the idea of using free cash to balance a budget, but Except we kept I do understand that there's some amount, we'll call it a million dollars, it could be more, it could be less, that is going to come back yeah. whether you like it or not. Um, and so I'm okay with that. So when you do it that way, you're not really spending it, you're not really. loaning it. Yeah, you're, you're expecting it back, and right. when enough history builds up and it says I'm not coming back, then you have to re-examine your policy. That's kind of what's there. And that's, that's the discussion that we had a few years back, which is when we started to see you know, windfalls of a million here and there, the, the role of government is not to be sitting on a pile of cash. It's, right. it's just to use it for the residents. That, that, you know, or to reduce taxes. taxes. Or to reduce taxes. Yeah. Yeah. And this also helps by providing some insurance against volatility year to year. You've got a cushion going, right. and that's a valid use of And it's a one-time pile of cash. So we've done a lot of capital over the last five years. And in November, town well, meeting. Well, it protects you when that unfunded mandate shows up and you've got to do it. So the answer to this is, since the regeneration rate is driven by the budget, mm. it has nothing to do with the balance. It ought to be everything to do with what comes back every year, which is the million dollars. Okay. So you're suggesting right that that's, that should be baked in, a policy. and we've been doubling that. Well, uh, we For have. a while. Huh? Yeah, we have. Uh, when I went through the listening sessions, I started giving two sets of figures. Uh, and for next year, for what it was worth, if we had $2 million, we were 0.7% operating budget. If we had zero, it's minus 0.3%. Um, a few numbers have changed since then. In round numbers, if you use a million, it's zero next year. So I think that's what the superintendent and I will start discussing. And we'll have to talk about <coughs> income, but I don't know why they would object to having a million as a default. Um, so a can I ask you a question on. about that? Because yeah. I think this is a question that we'll get... If I was in the audience, I would. I'm in the audience, and I'm asking this question. Yeah. How do you, how do you roll back when there's been an appetite at two million dollars now for uh, several years? Um, the only way you do it is is one of two ways and combinations. You insert another million in revenue from an override, or you cut expenses by a million, or some combination. So, when you think about this, and that when you go into that that recipe that gets baked in, one of those two things has to happen Absolutely. when we build the financial plan for presentation to yep. the voting public. But if history is any indicator, you're going to get a million and a half or two million back some years, even some though you years. do those things. Yep. So then what do you do when that starts creeping up to eight or ten? Well, I, I think that I think if you have that happening and unintended expenses not showing up, I mean, you build a percentage in, and now what do you do with that money? You do one of several things. You either, you know, accelerate capital projects so that things are done, early, you know, further in advance and therefore generally cheaper. Um, I mean, that's one of the things you do. Um, do you somehow reduce taxes, or would we dare even think about that? Because that's really, there. that's the citizen's money. So either they've got to get services or they've got to get refunds. But don't I mean, they've got to get budget. one thing or the other. But don't put it in the budget. Use it for one-time things yes. rather than today. Uh, I, would, um, I would sort of sneak it into the budget. And we talked a little about this internally, but the, the two biggest users of capital are in the room, DPW and facilities generally, occasional fire truck. Um, <clears throat> broadly speaking, um, our capital, our infrastructure is in as good a shape as any peer community, broadly, um, and certainly better than most. We don't necessarily um, spend, uh, as a percent, a lot of money on capital compared to them. We've just done it for a lot of years. For 10 years now, we've done a good job. We could easily trim that 5% down to some other number. Um, and then when the one-time revenues roll in the door, you take a bite out of the capital that you didn't plan as a budget item, and you know pick a number. We have $2 million of capital. We can only do one and, a, one and a half in the budget. We'll do the next half when money shows up. So in a way, you've sneakily taken a one-time money and put it on a one-time cost and lowered the amount of capital you're willing to commit to. And it's probably okay. We're in a position now where that's probably okay. You're playing $2 million of capital, but you have a million and a half of funding. So you only do a million and a half in the operating budget, and then 
you have in your mind, I know where the other half is going if we have the cash. We have some swing projects here, yeah. Because we have effectively done that, and we've been doing 6 to 7% capital for the last five years, with a few exceptions. I think what you're describing is a is an exercise that needs to be simplified for the public. Oh, yeah. Now, you know... I wouldn't even Because in, li in the, the listening sessions, it. clearly, people don't disconnect capital from operating. They just yeah. don't. Right. I mean, right. they think about it as though... I, I mean, we had someone say... You have a pile of $100 million. If you can't make it work on $100 million, then there's something wrong with you. I mean, I remember this guy saying that directly, and I, I kind of understand where he's coming from, but at the same time, I think part of it is it, it becomes incumbent on us to really separate and let people understand that that capital is being spent in a different way and being earmarked so that you don't have unexpected expenses like, oh, you need a fire truck? Hadn't thought about that. This one is, you know, 25 years old. Um, I, you remember those days? <laughs> <laughs> I mean, I think it's important that we do, that we that we try to limit the use of free cash as as a um, as a way to balance the budget. Um, and we shouldn't, you know. And I know we started with one, it was one and a half, and then it was two, and then we say, well, we, you know, we're just loaning it, we're giving it back. Well, that's because we're really shrewd managers. Um, you know, that when we commit the two million dollars of free cash, hmm. you know, we're kind of, we're hoping that some of it comes back, but we're committing it, essentially. Yeah. And so I, I think that that's a bad policy because we now have gone through, yeah. and there's fewer and fewer opportunities for some of this stuff now. To that's back. true. Yeah. So, you know, to to basically raise our threshold in terms of what we want to have as free cash, and then also limit it spending on a year to year basis. I think both of those are, are, are important because at some point we're going to commit the two million dollars and we're going to need two and a half, and you know it, it's it, it you know just we're, we're we don't want to get lulled to sleep in the fact that we've been really good caretakers of the money and shrewd managers. They're saying, oh, you, we're really we're committing two, but we really know it's only going to be one because at some point it's going to be two. Mm -hmm. and, yep. Um, we're playing roulette and we've won so far. Right. 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 So would you, you'd make that a formal policy of not to exceed one million? I don't know. It's, it's, That's it's truly it's a fin comes guidance. Yeah. Um, you know, if the pedal comes to the metal, the budget I give FinCom may or may not agree with FinCom's guidance. I don't mm -hmm. have to. Mm -hmm. But yeah, I would think reasonable collaboration that they're going to understand they can't be using free cash. And certainly, if an override passes, I don't know why this would be a difficulty yeah, at, sure all. at all. Right. 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 Trying to get away from that. Yeah, a little help. Yeah, I mean, you could argue to zero philosophically, but as a practical matter, I don't think you have to. Um, next is to fund the pension more. Where Our turn target is, I think it's 2029. Uh, we need to defease it faster. It's pretty impossible to defease it much faster. If you wanted to cut five years off, I think we'd have to double the contribution or something. That's not going to happen. Uh, and I looked at different models, and right now the the retirement board is holding us to four and a half percent a year, and Sharon's been fighting them off not to go higher. Um, the best approach, again, because of this intrinsic gap, and you don't want to have expenses grow at a fast rate, is to make a one-time bump up with an override, and then just have it go at a smaller rate every year going forward. So you have, you know, you pick a number, add a half million dollars to the pension funding in the first year, and then grow it at as, as little as we can little as the retirement board to let us get away with. But I think it's important that part of the override be earmarked for a long-term obligation we know we have. Mm -hmm. uh, and we're not even taking a bite out of OPEB at this point, honestly. This, But by funding pensions quicker, that gets us to the OPEB discussion quicker. And I, I tried to tie in the pension target with an override target, and it just doesn't work. It's too, it's too much of a gap. 2029 is a long distance away. When does the, when the board when do these liabilities show up in the balance sheet again? Next year? Next yeah. Year. <laughs> yeah, and the, and the 2029 target is way too susceptible to whatever interest rate they'll allow or they assume and what returns you get in the stock market. So you don't want to tie your policy too much to that. Uh, any other color kind of from the retirement board's angle? They wanted to go to six and a half a year, was it? No, I think that the, the four and a half was enough that But 
Chair, yeah, realistically, I mean, are we even making a dent in our obligations? Well, yeah. I mean, What's the balance so far? The paid in balance against the for OPEP or yeah. pension? For the OPEP, or are we talking? We're doing better on pensions. Yeah, yeah, yeah we're we doing are. much better. What's our funding on pension now? Percent? Fifty? In the seventies? Oh, for the pension, it's like seventy-nine percent. So we're there. We're, we're, we're comparable with peer communities is what we're doing. Um, and then we're going to be funded by two thousand twenty-nine. The OPEP, it's like a sixty-seven million dollar liability, and we're not even covering our annual required contribution to get to the thirty. Year and payout. we're still putting in half a million a year. Yeah, we are. We're, so and yeah, we're doing better than a lot of communities because a lot of communities aren't doing that. Um, but it's not enough to cover what our annual required contribution to pay off in 30 years. Because when the, when the um, actuary does an evaluation, they do a 30-year evaluation. You can't make that annual contribution. Every time they do your evaluation, they reset to a new 30 years because you're not making progress towards the goal that they set for you. For the enterprise funds, we are covering our annual required. Theirs is actually going to be funded if it goes within an 18-year period. But that's the smaller piece. The enterprise is the smaller piece of the pie. The general fund is most where people are kind of included, and that one's just too big. The liability is too big for us to pick up on an annual basis. Fully funding the um, pension by 2029, you can redirect some of those funds in such a really drill way and, and get that, that OPEB fully funded within a 30 year period. So I do think you have to take that into because I think we have to have conscientious effort yeah. in that direction. All you have to do is look at some of these communities in California. I mean, they're literally, they're, ban they're bankrupt. Look at Chicago. Oh, please, uh, yeah. That's, that wouldn't hurt. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> a little close to home. Yeah, a little close to home. Um, but that's also something your average man on the street may not understand. It sounds yeah. so easy to say, mañana, we'll put it off another day. Yeah, and, and we're suffering now. I, I don't remember the numbers, but for the pension fund, I'll say half. I, I know it's not exactly half of the money we put in there is for past sins, not addressed. Not, it's not the current run rate. We're causing future sins in OPEP by not, by not acknowledging and defeasing our annual obligation. So to the extent we're mad at people 40 years ago for not taking care of pension, we're not taking care of OPEP right now. Now you have, you have a number on the first bullet, but you only have the words increase. Do you have a particular number in mind you want to monetize it? Um, I think I looked at a number that was around three or four hundred thousand dollars in the first year, and then I grew it at five percent a year instead of four and a half. But I don't. There's no magic there. Uh, it's to really just target the pension and the OPEB problems. That would be an override all by itself, unfortunately. Uh, and you know, one of the options we have, and I haven't really talked to Sharon about it, is. We can go out and borrow $67 million for OPEP right now at low interest rates and invest it in the stock market. So there's an appetite. Some communities have done that. I thought you can't do that. Yes, you can. You can? I wanted to do that. And for pension also. Really? Oh, yeah. Um, one community did it a few years back and went out and lost 12% in the first year in the stock market. And other communities have not followed. <laughs> but. There's creative things you can do. <laughs> now, the mistake they made is writing one check to the stock market on one day instead of putting right. it in over a period of time. But Dollar cost average, of course. Yeah, exactly. Um, but these are <laughs> kinds of long-term financial planning things you need to think about. If, if we're borrowing at 2% or 1.5%, as better. opposed to these guys borrowing at 5 or 6 years ago, and they thought it was a good idea. Mm -hmm. um, I talked a little about the capital debt, how you don't have to keep your spending right at five. You could lower it. Um, there's not much we can say tonight, but I, I know it's really important that we reserve for the TLT litigation item. Right. And I do hope that we're going to have more of a public discussion at some point before September 1st on that. I think it's critical. Um, that that it's more necessary. With the superintendent and with some lawyers because mm -hmm. we don't want to be accused of lack, lack of transparency, but right now we can't be transparent. Well, it's less about what we're accused of and more about what's the right yeah. thing to do. People need to be yeah. imbued with all of the facts in order to be able to make decisions, and that's yeah. critically yeah. important. This is a big problem that we've got to get a hold of. We'll have more to say in the future, but uh, yeah, mm -hmm. big cloud right now. Yeah. Um, I, I think it's kind of a, an assumption and maybe a default, but we have to say it that we have to continue to budget realistically. 
Um, as again, I could make things up and balance a budget. I could say health insurance isn't going to grow at eight; it's going to grow at four. Yeah, but that's what's gotten us through this. That's made our eighteen eight year override yeah. a thirteen year override, right. is because we were realistic and. Yeah, because if we hadn't been, we could have been spending more money in those earlier years in year eight, and we'd have been out of money by year 10 or whatever. Um, and then this last one, you know, it's obvious to some of us in the room, but it's pretty hard to explain. Because of the mismatch in the growth rate of revenues and expenses, if you're going to do an override, you got this difference. Your override has to draw a line in the middle of that expense growth and you have to raise a certain amount of money that in the first year or in several years you don't want. You don't want to use it. You want to put it aside. Or you want to spend it on one-time things. You know, and that gets complicated. But isn't that the stretch that takes you out Because if, if, you, if you went out and you pick a number, you have a million dollar override and you add a million to your spend, what have you accomplished? Nothing. You, you, right. you, you funded one year. Maybe. <laughs> right. So you have to raise two million and spend one million, and then over those period of time, the two million is going to work when the one million costs two, or whatever the math says. That's why it's imperative that the delivery system to, you know, to people who are going to make decisions about voting, they need to understand what this means and what it doesn't mean. Yeah, I mean, it's not all of a <coughs> sudden. Here's the ticket to bright, new, shiny, these things. It's not money from the sky. In no. fact, we're going to have to right. tighten our belts just to make it work. This says you've actually got to save a goodly portion of what year one, two, three, four, five bring in for year six through 13, yep. just right. to stay even at that three and a quarter percent. That's exactly right. Which is why you need to say, this is what we're going to spend it on. So you know that number, so you know how long you need to stretch it out to make it work. So kind of, you need to fill in the box. And when you do that, logically, you know, things won't work out as you, as you think. But at the end of the eight years, you're going to have, by using past cash saved, you're going to be using a run, a run rate of free cash in a budget that's monstrous. Oh, absolutely. And all of a sudden, the cliff you've built is unbelievable. <laughs> yeah. I mean, I can very quickly, by using some modest numbers in 10 years, get to a $10 million free, free cash, cash use, use in the last year. It's unbelievable. You better be ready for that one. So... That's why this is such a kind of interesting you know, that's, math You could show that graphically, and I think yeah. it needs to be demonstrated. In, in yeah. So many people need to see that visual evidence. It's just easier for them to understand. And I think we, again, it comes back to, you know, it's incumbent on us to make everything as simple as possible to, to digest so that yeah, good decisions can be made. Looking backwards, it's, it's obviously easier to do that, but, you know, from a purely financial standpoint, the override discussion should have heated up three years ago here. Yep. We had it, but we knew it wasn't urgent. Uh, and we all knew that. FinCom's talked about it probably for six years. Um, we, we allowed ourselves to you know, exist on two million plus of free cash. We should have never let that happen. Because uh, all you're doing is building up the need for the override as opposed to you know, if you're willing to do an override, we can provide these services. Now the, the cliff we've already built is big. Uh, not as much as it was 13 years ago, and that's the real question. From a political and, and practical standpoint, people need to see what it's going to be like when I fall off that cliff. The interesting thing, though, it's been a struggle for the last three years in trying to get across that message of yeah. two million be in a, in an unrealistic number to be spent that way. Um, yeah. I, and it, oh, we've, we've also had a finance committee that, if you will, has been very easy to spend money. Oh, yeah. That finance committee did not exist when I was on it 15 years ago, I, I guarantee you that. Normally, it FinCom's are more... It was different five years ago. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So that's that's been an unexpected change to some degree. Do you... Um, that last bullet also means that the caretakers of that accumulated budget, accumulated funding, are going to have to be the guardians of the gate, because there's going to be a, right. a giant sucking sound from a variety of folks that say, hey, there's money in the kitty, we ought to go off and do X. That's salted away for years 6 through 13. 
And unless you're guarding that and have the lock on the door and everyone's got the same mindset, it's going to be so easy to spend it on things when, in fact, it's for the latter half of the of the override period. The documentation has got to be something that we we that I think we insist on, um, so that I mean, who knows what this board and you know people making decisions will be five years from now because right. we don't know what that's going to be. But I mean, there's got to be a certain document. There's got to be a roadmap that is clear because I, I don't think there was any such roadmap, you know, from the last time through. No, and, and to, to John Arena's point, that's probably my biggest single concern is that I'd go one step furth further and say we're not going to sort of leave a diary. We're going to leave a policy. Yeah. Um, and the policy, when I, I, the three deal. months I started, three months later, FinCom had three policies they never had before. And we had a, bu a budget method that everyone could understand. And we've adjusted it as need be. Um, we, need, we need a policy that might be very complicated, but has to be explained simply. And one example is you use a stabilization fund for health insurance and state aid. That's what you call it. You know, the simple, what could be simpler? You draw on that anytime your revenues are short and anytime your health insurance is above whatever. And all of a sudden, then people just don't even know that money exists because it, you know, we put in a big chunk in the first couple of years, and it's meant to take care of things you know are going to be problems. So I think you need a policy that doesn't leave any discretion, or, or makes it harder. Agreed. To stray. You, know, you said it wisely. I think you also need to get the reasoning behind the policy because the policy in yeah. a vacuum, people get it, but they don't understand what. It's like a fence out in the middle of a field. It was built yeah. for a reason, right? You got to go find the reason. Well, I, I think if you, and again, it's it's conceptually hard, but it has to be made simple. <coughs> if you can find a way to balance your run rates of revenues and expenses. You take out the things that don't allow that to happen, and then whatever's left works. That's a good model. So you know maybe we have to take out a few more things, uh, whatever costs we think are going to go up more, whatever revenues are going to go up slower. But we have somehow. When I was on FinCom, I I talked about. Wouldn't it be nice to match cash flows as best we could with revenues and expenses? So wouldn't it be nice to be able to direct, for instance, property taxes at the operating budget? Because both of those are pretty predictable. And the other things are, are crazy. You know, state aid goes way up and down. Health insurance goes way up and down. Why don't we match those off in the corner? And that's how accommodated costs kind of got born. But you have to, you know, none of this exists in other communities. <laughs> So you can't say, well, this town does a good job. So no one thinks this way. Um, but you really have to, to leave something for the next group of selectmen and town manager to understand and See, to use. We built, a, largely you built, a complex method of compensating for the vagaries of your over your revenues and accommodated your expenses. Other communities may not have it. And I dare say that the next group coming in is going to need a primer on why it's built this way and how to run it and not screw it up because you dealt with most of the variation through the revolving funds, and you're proposing some others, as it might be. Mm. I could see others, if they don't have a good understanding, might right. goof that up. Just throw the whole thing out. Yeah. Well, every two or three years, we'd have a discussion with the schools about whether they wanted to continue the model or not. And then they were at Las Vegas, because if they guessed wrong, and their accommodated costs went up, and they pulled out, they were out of luck. So they did realize, in the long run, this is a good model because it's designed to protect me when I have unexpected costs that I have no say over, like out of district special ed or energy or whatever it might be. And that's why it was there. Um, and I think as long as people that come into the system understand it, you know, maybe every so often I need to spend a little more time with FinCom to make sure they understand it. Um, but it's simple to use once you get in the habit. And I think anything is simple to use once you get it. You don't have to understand all the theory behind it either, other than maybe a FinCom. But we have to have a real simple way to do this going forward. It's not going to work. <coughs> um, the last thing on your agenda for tonight is next week, next Tuesday, you have a 6 o'clock meeting with CPDC. Mm -hmm. And um, I've added to what, uh, what Jean and Julie had for an agenda. I stuck uh, 15 minutes of... Uh, Chairman Halsey in at 6:45. <laughs> um, 
kind of look in it. Got that, Joe? So that minutes. means that's about a one-minute speech <laughs> for most people. Plan for five. Yeah, it's 15 minutes, right? <laughs> people can, can leave whenever they want. That long? I'm not sure. <laughs> And I leave that up to you folks to discuss and decide what it is you want to say, but I think it's important that the boards especially have some background of the process that you and the planners have gone through in the last few years and your vision for the town and their responsibility as a board to understand all this. And, you know, another, another point that I think is kind of lost on maybe some of the community is you five don't agree on everything at all. Right. When you, but, but when you're sitting <laughs> no. here, you can't really tell because you're working for the betterment of the whole community. Yeah. Um, not every board or committee operates that way, and they need to learn to in some cases. The, the differences are fine, they're natural, but you've got to have some kind of mechanism to come into a consensus that everyone agrees it's not what everything I want, but it's the best thing for the town. Um, and I don't know that the community appreciates how well you guys do that because they don't see you punching each other like other communities yeah. do. <laughs> and that's not an exaggeration if you look at our border towns. <laughs> it has happened. Yes. So not there recently. Been some fistfights recorded yeah. actually. And they do check the guns at the, at the door. <laughs> <laughs> do they? Yeah. Oh, I'm sorry, okay. stretching. <laughs> <laughs> I thought you were reaching for your. So reaching for your. Is, yeah. is CPDC the only other board being invited, or we? No, we invited them all. Oh, okay. Um, Right. CPDC will be there as a board fully. Right. Um, what do we invite the chairs and the vice chairs? Or I think we asked the chairs, and if they couldn't make it, to send someone or two. Okay. And if they wanted to post, just let people know. All right. I think I mentioned to some of you the uh, the only committee I've heard from that wants to attend or possibly as a full committee is the permanent building committee of all things, <laughs> which isn't even one of our committees. Right. And, and they, the chair believed that what he heard the agenda was was so important that how could they miss it? <laughs> Dan, did you have a question? Yeah, I have another topic we need to get into, and I'm going to suggest this for our August 16th meeting. That is the form that the question should take. I yeah. was just kind of flipping through some of the DOR documentations. We in the past have gone with just a single question, a single choice, with a broad category of how the money is spent. Yeah. There are other approaches. Uh, one I was just looking at was kind of intriguing. It's called a pyramid approach, where three different up any number you want number of dollar amounts pyramid can be. Scheme, yeah. not a scheme. <laughs> not a scheme. I know that's what people are going to say. Right? Uh, one example said, you know, ten million, five million, two million. Now that may invite the lowest amount to be picked, but it's an option available. There are also uh, you can you can uh, itemize where the spending should happen. We've steered clear of that in the past. I think it's worthy of having a discussion on all these items before we form the question. Yes, yeah, sir. I want to ask a question that came up at, at our breakfast this morning is um, what's town meeting's role in this yeah. process? They don't really formally have one. I know no, they don't, but, but what do know, we I'm want asking to... for a selfish reason. Do you need the final form of the question on August 16th when you close a warrant? Is that the day we're doing that? No, that's not for the election. Uh, that's for the special town meeting. Right. So if you want town meeting to vote, we have to close warrant articles that night. Can we put this in on the 26th? Uh, you have to do it that night. Yeah. I do it before. Because it's got to yeah. go to print. It looks like go we have voters. time. So before the 16th? Yeah. Well, you would have to start 26th. We need to discuss in the form of the question and have it finalized by the 16th meeting through town I, council. I just love how nimble government is. It yeah. just lets you. <laughs> yeah, because you're, you're, you're having a town meeting in September. By the ch by the charter, you're obliged to give seven days' notice. We should give 14 in print. It takes a while right. to get it printed and so forth. Uh, I'm just raising that we spend zero time talking about this. Yeah, I think so it's an important thing to talk about. I agree. Yeah, yeah. yeah you're right. And yeah. I, I don't think it's critical that town meeting approves the exact form of a question because they don't have a role. Right. I think it's more the spirit of a question or the spirit of several yeah, or the questions. amount. I don't I, think it's. I critical that you close a warrant article that has the exact language that's going to the voters. That's just my opinion. It might be helpful. It might not be critical. It's I also helpful to get town meeting guidance well, it's as well. Yeah, but you can do that with any kind of wording. It can be an instructional motion. I'm, we don't even have to have yeah, this be a I'm, I'm very, article. Th this has caused me a great deal of uncomfortability from the and very beginning. Some of town meeting because I thought it, initially we were going to bring some sort of a 
an actual appropriation vote to them no. prior to going to the override. Okay. Uh, so they would have some idea of what we're doing in no. a formal sense and approve it, but this is now devolved to nothing more than an instructional motion, right. which has no right. real, it's a courtesy and only a courtesy, but it has no binding effect on the board. Right. Uh, well, we've heard so from I'm, many town meeting members who are dismayed that we've called a special town meeting. Well, we do have legitimate articles in addition to that. We absolutely do. So that town meeting should happen. But the question is, what do you do about the override other than give a report of our intentions? So let's say that you, let's just say for purposes of an argument that you have a warrant um, that we agree on um, that ends up in front of town meeting, and they go, but we don't want to do that. And well, they, we they say, have well, to act on every article. Thank you. We, we hear what you're saying, but we're going to do what we want to do anyway. Or, I mean, I guess what I'm saying is um, I do think it's very important. The warrants that we've got that we will have ready, which I think are the articles. some protective articles around um, our seniors you know, that, yeah. we've, that we've previously discussed, and I'm assuming that those may find their way. I hope that they find their way. There. If they do, the first that's meeting. a good reason to have the town meeting. Yeah, right. that on its own merit is right. a good reason to have right. a town meeting. Where you go from there becomes kind of an open question. And, yeah. You know, that's the reason I raised it this morning. Yeah, and, and I think we should ask town council's advice tomorrow, if he has any, and then we have to talk to the moderator. It's his town meeting. Yeah. Um, you could take this whole discussion as a report under Article 2. Which is one voter room discussion. Do it. Or you could have an article that people vote on that has no binding impact. And, and I'm sure you could think of things in between. So at what point are we going to actually have a number? <laughs> and, uh, yeah. I mean, I, I, I needed some 16. of these questions answered. Sure. Yeah. I'd give you one right now, but I need to see a little bit of the reason Probably for it. 26, would that be a fair? 26 million? Wow, that's kind of No, July 26th. <laughs> Okay. Twenty-six million to get it done. <laughs> yeah, I'd say. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yes. Um, it strikes me that the way we might bring this up is that the board feels this is a worthy question to put before the voters, and tonight's discussion is more to inform the, the body politic and town meeting why we think that, but not necessarily invoke or ask for a vote. The purpose of the override vote is to put the question before the right. folks that pay the bill. Right. The purpose of town meeting is we're using it as a convenient opportunity to, to spend some time during an already scheduled town meeting and are interested in their comments, but we're not necessarily compelled to respond to them. We're compelled to the other 10,000 voters in the town. And they can turn, choose to vote us down. Right? We're not voting for it. We're putting the question to them so that they can determine what to do, what is done. I, I agree with that right up to the point of putting it to a vote. I don't, I don't even see. I think it's... My opinion is it's informational. Oh, I yeah. agree. I, I, I agree I mean, with a that. vote by the citizens on yes, September yeah. 1. Okay, so we are on the same page. Informational yeah. town meeting. So I mean, September 1 is, is, is an informational. Whoa, whoa, whoa. We're talking yeah. about the town meeting. Right. So well, September 1 is a dress rehearsal, in my opinion, for a presentation to town meeting. Okay. It, to me, the, the presentation to town meeting is informational. Yeah. Um, and it's to let them know that we've come to certain conclusions, if we do come to those conclusions on August 16th, that says we should have uh, a special election. And, you know, here's the content of where we're headed with that. Um, and here's why. And I think that that becomes, I, I think it becomes a refined replay of September 1. That's exist that's my picture on the wall. That doesn't exactly. have to be. Exactly. That doesn't have to be the answer, but okay. that's right. what I see. If we do it well, I think you end up with 192 folks that can recite some or hopefully most of the argument and continue it forward. Yeah. Well, there's 192 voters in there, too. As well, but you'd like them to be advocates or there's at least missionaries. 130 on any given evening. But, yeah. but it is very unusual for a town to put this in front of a town. It is. Extremely unusual. Yeah. And I, I was a little surprised that some town meeting members Hadn't really thought about that. They didn't that. want to even hear it. They didn't want to they know part of it. Well, some also want to know why they didn't have the final say. That's which, true. Which right. means they don't understand. Those that didn't want any part of it, the reasoning, yeah. I'm sure, varied, but what was the predominant one? It's not the role of town meeting. Which is correct. Okay. Yeah, which is, yeah, which is yeah, correct. I mean, that, that is correct, but 
I think that we owe the other branch of government the courtesy of yeah. information, you know, based on our analysis and why we're taking steps we're taking. I just think that's we're not asking for a vote. I think that's a highly courteous thing to do. Uh, yeah. So we really will have to decide with Ray's help. How does this approach town meeting? If you're not asking for a vote, it doesn't sound like an article. To me. It's a report. It's a, it's a that, report or an instructional. As report. as one person, that's report. the way I see it. And I'm, yeah. I, you know, I, right. I'm happy to, you know, yeah. let us engage that conversation as we often do about where we should go with this thing and come to some general consensus. And actually, people in town meeting will ask good questions. Oh, I know. And 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 so, I, and I think that that, that, that asking those questions um, is instructive. Well, they won't have an opportunity uh, technically to ask questions on this, although the moderator, yes. if he deems it wise, would allow questions beyond the scope of the three articles during the debate of those articles. In other words, they all do tend to pertain to an override potentially, or the reason we're bringing them forward is potentially because of an override. So he might allow general questions on the override. But if we just give a report, questions are not allowed. So that's the downside of not putting it up to Yeah, them. I mean, I, I, I think that would leave people feeling a little safe. So, how do we solve that problem there? Do we talk to, do we talk to the moderator who, you know, who manages could, the flow? Could allow some meeting? latitude of discussion under the and other three. suggest yeah. that we're, in, that we're, in, that we're looking forward to engaging that? Is that maybe the better move? I understand well, where you're coming from. I think from. so. I, you know, I, you're going to drag people like right, you know, right, right after Labor Day, you know, for a town meeting that talks about the override, and then don't ask them what they think or, or let them. Speak. I, I think that's kind of. It's like yes. Uh, mm. uh, I, you know. uh, yeah, I don't disagree with that, but I also think that it it could be folly to call for a vote. Yeah. yeah. What are they voting? They're not. They don't know what they're voting. I mean, it's a you know, it's a non-binding vote right. on right. anything, and frankly, at that point in the discussion, correct me if I'm wrong on form on this, Bob. We're going to be convened as a board of selectmen at the town meeting, and are we? Oh, we have yeah, to. Yeah. Yeah. And we call the special town the special election. Right. That, that night. That night. Your deadline is the first night of that town meeting. Oh, that's right. Yeah, that's the right. deadline is going to have it yeah. done before that morning. Yep. So that's got to happen. Well, I guess it has to happen before midnight, but maybe that doesn't really apply either. Um, uh, but isn't that what has to happen? Isn't yeah. that the order of things? Do you know the time frame or the timeline of a ballot question? Do you have any idea? Um, mm. You know, if we're going to have an election in October on whatever the day is, at what point does the language legally need to be finalized? I don't really know. I'm, I'm thinking it's at least 35 days. Yeah, I'd have to check with Laura on okay. that. How, how come we have closed warrant for special election on our October 4th agenda, if that is true, what you just told us? I don't know. That, I have to see what that is. I didn't think as much notice is required as you're saying. I thought it was two weeks. It's two weeks. So why are we doing this on the 12th of September? Mm -hmm. Oh, um, the September one is the November town meeting. Believe it or not, it's backwards. Yeah. Yeah. Because in the charter, you have to do the November yeah, that's fine. way early. Yeah. Yeah. Is it the? Uh, I'm, well, I'm, I'm just confused. wondering if September the language 20th. has to be finalized before they actually call close the language right. of the vote. Yeah, the October fourth warrant is all about the November town meeting. Huh? No, it's no. The there's a around. closed warrant for special election 1018 it's, uh, on there too. In September, you have to close the November town meeting. You're doing warrant. two, two things. It's backwards. It's complete. It's it's government. You got to remember. Drop your oh, yeah. Here we go again. All right. Excuse so can we language. clarify? So this is correct. This that is stated. Correct. Okay. Yeah. So we do now, not have to on you, the, the night of the town meeting. We are not closing the warrant for that no, special election. That's correct. That's, that's not true. For the special election, that's by state law and. I know the biggest influence. Oh, we're giving the town clerk notice. notice. She's got rules to follow. By a vote? Military votes outside the country. Okay. Just to, so why know. are we not closing the warrant that night then? We can close it earlier. I'm just yeah. putting in deadlines where you can't close it after this date. Oh, that, that's the that's drop the dead. Date. Okay, fine. I got it. All right. And that's just the window between that date and got it. 
the actual election itself, which is two weeks. Right. Got it. I, I would clearly suggest you do it sooner. Okay. No, I'm not confused. Okay. Yeah. I mean, we could close it after we vote. Depends on where we are in the formation. I'm not sure. I'm not sure when the ballot question language needs to be finalized, I guess I'll say. Well, let's well, make before sure. October 18th. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> no, yeah. before yeah. September 12th, I'd say. I, yeah, I think it might need to be before September 12th. So we need to really talk about this on the 16th. You might. So that's the 35 days you referred to. And, the, and again, yeah. maybe. It's sticking out. I'm, I'm not sure if that's an election kind of default. <laughs> <laughs> no. And it's it's <laughs> in order to advise um, out-of-state voters, military primary. Right. Give them adequate notice. Right. Back way back, way way back to Dan's question about the form of it. Mm -hmm. That's a worthy discussion to have. Whether right. it should be a single number, whether it should present a couple of different options that are mutually exclusive or not mutually exclusive. That's probably out of scope for tonight. Yeah, there are good examples in this document. I'll send it to Bob, and he can. Is there a reason goes. why we can't um, have a meeting between the twenty sixth and the sixteenth? What months are you in now? August. No, it's not really. between between the twenty sixth of July and August sixteenth. We, we're gonna. Why do we need to do that? Uh, it yeah. depends on your availability. Yeah, it's mostly quorum. Right. I mean, I'm around pretty much. I remember doing a survey a few months ago, and there was some tough periods in the summer for quorums. But that's before this got serious. Mm -hmm. Yeah, well, I'm well, around. I mean, you know, <laughs> I for one know that I will not be here on the twenty sixth. Right. Oh, I see. Uh, okay. Yeah. Of, of July. Yeah. yeah. Mm. And will not be able to participate by phone. Either. Got it. Okay. So. Um, yeah, I, I'm, I'm open to it. And particularly with the topic that yeah. Dan has raised yeah. and John has reiterated, you know, trying to get the form the way that we're, you know, <coughs> comfortable in a consensus I'm way. I'm okay. If we come up with a couple of dates between the 19th and or the 26th. Second or the 9th. Yeah. Are there a couple of alternatives we could be distributing, Dan, or just some thought-provoking examples? Is that, is that the proposal? Second. You're proposing to distribute some ideas. Yeah, I'm going to have Bob send this DOR document around, which has examples of what I'm talking about, and then we can leverage a discussion off that as to which way. And having seen it, it's reasonably exhaustive. It's got a bunch of different. Oh yeah, things. yeah. So it's, I think maybe it's got we examples. Convert that into a PowerPoint for purposes mm. of that meeting. Maybe. No. No, if you could. Yeah, and put the endpoints up there. I mean, yeah. Yeah. the endpoints are the simplest question is for the operations of the town and the school. Right, right. X million dollars. Right. right. And then the complicated one is a variation of what the town did last time when it listed things like mosquito spray. Right. And remember, yeah. everything yeah, you listed is the, only in the first year. Right, right. I actually think that that's. And, and the one that has been. And then the variation on the theme is more than one, one number. More than one number can be presented. It is. It, it, in the interest of simplicity, I think if we start drilling down to that, we're going to just right. well. I think we need to talk. On the face of it. We need to talk about right. the pros and cons yeah. before we just dismiss it. I mean, I, I, I'm, yeah. I, I'd love to to, yeah. to look at. It. I mean, I've seen what other towns have done. Right. It becomes almost like a, 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 me, a restaurant menu. Oh, yeah. you know, I don't I've want seen, to see that. I've seen yeah. that, and right. you know, if you give people, you know, A, B, and C, it'll get it'll be B because some people are going to say, well, I want to vote for. Them. I'm not going to vote for the highest. Mm -hmm. So, you know, I, I mean, I, I, great to look at. The consideration. That that's exactly part of the discussion. That's why we want to have that discussion, and it gets yeah. into the political and gets into the what if, you know. But you Luckily, also love the town manager under contract by that time. <laughs> oh, <sorry>. good. <laughs> for more than a month. <laughs> okay. Yeah. You, Which uh, is all we've, we've only got yeah. them for a month now, so. Yeah. Uh, Rent a town manager. <laughs> <laughs> you also have to. Minutes. Have an objective for why you'd have more than one number on there. Right. What's what's the purpose it serves? There's actually this does this, this does that. It's either a different period of time, which probably isn't a good idea, or it's this one does the bare bones and this one adds a few things. But you've got to have a reason. But I, and I would definitely suggest you engage in your, your colleagues in the school committee on this one. I think they've already had this discussion. Say again, that last I time. think they've already had this discussion. Regarding. The form of the question? One or more questions. What is there? I, I can't. I don't really want to answer for them because it's something I think. Well, I mean, we've job. seen things in the, in the newspaper the last two days. Mm -hmm. yeah. Yeah. Right. So, 
Right. Well, I'm open for the record on the second or the ninth of August if we need to. So, Bob, can yeah. you maybe I'll send out an email. work on? Okay. Yeah. Let, let's try to get everybody sure participating in a, in a calendar. Yeah, I'll be okay. Okay. I don't see how we can get this done nope. without at least an extra meeting. I uh, agree. For various point, we may have to do this every week for, for a while. Yeah, and, and I'll know a lot more tomorrow. Thank you all. Make, make sure you we guys get. Aren't on overtime. I thought I saw something in that document about we're, we're very restricted in what kind of. The document suggests we may be very restricted in what we can send out in the way of email information. So that's an important question. That, that with Ray, I know he gave us. Uh, Again, just a quick scan through that DOR document said we have to be very careful about mailing even informational stuff out using town resources. We have to be careful about yeah. that. Honestly, right. anything we need to know the exact rules of engagement. If we just fill space in a mail, or is that kind of well, maybe something we really need to? You need to know that. We need to queue Ray up yeah. around well, this. We've already tomorrow. had the chat, and where I left it was Ray. If town government's going to do anything, I'll clear it by you. Piece yeah. at a piece at a time, because yeah. otherwise it's a theoretical discussion. Right. And we have okay. Some minutes. Are we ready to uh, move on to the approval of minutes? Sure. That's my thing. Let's roll. Move to approve the minutes of May seventeenth, two thousand sixteen, as amended. Second. Discussion. All those in favor? Abstain, so it's 401. Uh, move to approve the minutes of June 1st, 2016, community listening session as amended. Second. I just have one small item on page four. Kevin Vent's name is V E N D T. I think it was page four. Kevin Vent, V E N D T, not V E N T. That's it. Okay. Further discussion or amendment? All those in favor as amended? Yep. Opposed? Abstain? 401. Move to approve the minutes of June 7, 2016, community listening session as amended. Second. Discussion. Two more names, page six. <laughs> Same guy. Kevin Vent, V E N D T. <laughs> Michelle Sanfi, I think it was Sanofi in the document. For the correct spelling is S A N P H Y. Oh, I didn't know that. Yep. yep. Check the voter list. Mm. I have a visual of F I. Nope, P H Y. Any other discussion or amendment? All those in favor? Five zero. Move to approve the minutes of June seventh, two thousand sixteen as amended. Second. Discussion? All those in favor? Opposed? 5 0. Okay. One more motion. We have uh, one more. Actually, before we do that, okay. um, can we have just some thoughts and clarification or um, on the correspondence from Denitra regarding the adoption island about um, how much time? I just, I mean, I just. Um, you know, there were some lapses in communication that we had. Um, we are making our whole for our damages, and anything beyond that, we should just talk about off, off camera. Yeah. You know, I did reply. I don't think I copied you with it for the letter. I copied the chair. Yes, yeah. I didn't, yeah, because I didn't see anything. I just, I just want to make sure we're addressing it. Oh, yeah. I, I think it's pretty clear we're being addressed. Bob is, you know, speaking directly with. And also, I believe Kirk Book yep. as at large so we're speaking on our behalf and on behalf of the town. Okay. And that seems to be resolving itself as, I as so. I see it. Okay. So, um, any, anything else to come before us tonight? Move to adjourn. Second. Is there a second? Second. second. Um, any discussion on that motion? <laughs> Not as appropriate. All in favor? <laughs> Aye. 955. Good night. Nice. Uh, John, uh, we should.
probably go tomorrow together. Uh, you want to pick me up at 11.30? Okay. And I would encourage any of you that um, have something specific about um, town council's performance or oh, you'd like okay. to see Enjoy your sleeping lights tomorrow. Um, going great. Going, going great so far. I yes, I want, I want him to answer questions he doesn't want to answer. <laughs> Bob I, knows which I, ones. I started, I described a couple of them to him. What happens if we don't actually and I'm the, and, I'm the, I, and you know how dead serious I am about the answer to that question. Oh, I know. You've I asked know. me that question before. The cost of doing business in the world. Oh, I got this. <laughs> Sorry about that. Well, I, I can't remember which one, but I asked him one of your questions. He says, oh, stop. <laughs> I said, no, I'm really serious. He goes, well, you're going to make me wealthy. <laughs> <laughs> Cheers. That's not the cost of doing business. <laughs> yeah.